Recording in progress. All right, let's move it up to see if we can get started. Call the order. Uh, select board vacancy interviews. Who do we have that is? Do we have people here for that? I can't tell you why they're here, but we do have people who are affiliated with that. All right, let's go with community input first. Is there any community input? Paul, I have right. some. Yep. Uh, Lorraine Hansen, 11 Watson Lane. Uh, I just want to mention, like last week, I understand that uh, our chief, John Yraskovich, was here and he was asking about a purchase of um, some of the vacation hours of our uh, police officers. I think our police force has been working so many hours trying to catch up because they have been understaffed for the last couple of years with the COVID and everything else. And it's been hard for them to keep up and take their vacation. So I agree we should be able to do that, but I would think that because we have a user-lose policy, that we shouldn't be doing something that would hurt other departments. Clearly, the reason that these hours have not been taken is because they can't, because they just need to have the staffing. So my thought would be, is of starting in the fiscal year 2020, that any hours that um, the police individual officers have been able to um, accrue during the year of 2020 that they were not able to take, they should be paid for those. In other words, if an officer was eligible to get, he, he accumulated during that year 80 hours and he could only take 10, he would be paid for 70. I wrote a letter about this. I, I got your letter and I did read through it, so I'm following what you're saying. And so I, I, I think it would be helpful if we did something like that, and then we could revisit it in 2021 at the end of this year and do it again next year if we need to. Because yeah. these guys have been working so hard, they should be recognized for their loyalty and dedication. I do not disagree with you at all, Lorraine, on that. And I know John brought up last week, and I'm pretty sure <coughs> you can agree with that about buying back for this year. Um, we just got to set the hours and what they're going to buy back, like 80 hours or something like that. I think we need to have an agenda item um, to um, go through that. Okay. Yeah. With John. I agree. Is John here today? Um, not yet, but okay. I, I anticipate it. All right, so do we have any candidates that are interested in the select board meeting as of right now for tonight's meeting? You have one present. Yeah, okay. we didn't schedule it for the Okay. Um, so we had to really have a discussion about how we're going to handle that. So we're not going to do it tonight, we're going to discuss. Well, we, we need to at least take a step forward and kind of proceed, I think. Okay. All right. I think the decision is whether, you know, well, if we're going to go through the process of interviewing all the candidates, I propose that we get resumes from everybody um, and we schedule a separate meeting um, outside of a regular select board meeting um, to go through that process. Um, I mentioned uh, in the email um, that I um, know um, almost all the candidates except for one, um, so I don't necessarily feel the need to go through the process, but um, if you would like to do that, then my proposal is that we have a separate meeting and we receive resumes from everybody. All right, I gotta, I gotta digest that for a little bit. I have a slightly different opinion where I think if we know most of the candidates and we can read through the information we have, we may be able to make a decision solely on that. Okay. Um, but we have decided to vote how we want to proceed. The other thing I'd say about the interviews is they'd be informal. Just basically a quick, if we do interviews, a quick uh, five or ten minutes on why the candidate is interested on taking over the position for the intern. Pretty much that will be it, and a little bit of maybe other background. Um, I would say if you want to have interviews, that you should come up with questions and be sure to ask everybody the same, same questions. questions. Right. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, right, so I think the process, we need to come up with a process. Like and, and a really yeah, and I'd like to try to get that done by the minute. We're going to try to meet next Tuesday, I hope, and then the fall on Monday. I think Wednesday. I think it has to be Wednesday because okay. the meeting is scheduled for Thursday right here. Okay. Wednesday and then probably the fall on Monday, and hopefully by then a decision will be made. Mm -hmm. Let's um, try to get it set up. Okay. All right? So, so I, I think it's just like, I think we need to decide on this step that we want to take. Do we want to? 
collect resumes, have a formal interview process, or we want to just collect resumes, review them, make a decision without the interview process. Um, so I think there's a couple options there. All right. It won't be tonight. Um, can you what? Yes, hi. S. Stephanie, uh, 413 Second Street. Um, I, my question is, is do you have a set of formal criteria with which you will be um, appointing uh, the select board person? And will it be um, transparent to the public what, uh, how you made your decisions? So I, I think that's a really good question because um, it was a question actually Caroline and I had a discussion about this week um, and it seems to this point there was no real formal process um, and so we, Caroline got a legal opinion um, um, about the requirements um, and the requirements are that it's all public and that's the only requirement. So the board can decide what the criteria, to her other point though, you know, what are you looking for in a candidate? And, and maybe having that sort of decided ahead of time what you're looking for and then how do the candidates match up to that? Right, and that's where I think, you know, if we're going to go to that step, it's more about just an interest, but more about qualifications. And that's why I said, if we're gonna take the, the, um, the direction of interviewing <coughs> then we should probably get resumes from each of the candidates if we want to be really like, kind of formal about the process. All right. I know it's still undetermined how that process is moving forward, but it's going to be, it's going to be, we'll have like three prepared questions that will be for everybody from the phone interviews, and then those questions would basically be the uh, basis on what we're going to determine the select, who the select person is. So okay. before we move on, I just want to yep. clarify that the board intends to meet on Wednesday the 8th, and that's the next meeting, and there's nothing for the candidates to do between now and the 8th, and then you're going to finalize a process on the 8th and be in touch with them at that point about what you're looking for from them. Is that right? Um, I, I think it's very ambiguous, isn't it? Well, I, yeah, I just want to make sure that, you know, if somebody reaches out, I know how to respond about... I would say by September 8th, we'll a questionnaire and a pay for the interview. Okay, so, so you're setting a, a September 8th meeting date? Yeah. Okay, so we want to proceed with it. Okay, it's an important decision. Okay, can we get past the reservation? Okay, so asking for reservations, but, but no candidate on the 8th. You're just talking about classes on the 8th. Uh, well, okay, which question? Or are you doing interviews on these? Well, I think it should be a separate meeting. I don't think it should be part of a regular select board meeting. Okay, mm -hmm. so you're going to be having a separate meeting on the 8th? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, thank you. So, because our agenda is often wrong, um, so, and we have a lot of things backing up, so I would suggest that it be handled separate from, and this is just a suggestion. No, I agree. I think that's a good idea. Just okay. have a separate meeting about it, you know, have the last an hour, and then we need to. Are you, are you doing interviews at that meeting, or are you just talking? No, it'll be, it'll, it'll be... It'll be... But not on the 8th. They're going to set the 8th, and on the 8th, they're going to pick a separate date to do interviews. Okay. Hopefully within the following week. It should be within the following week. All right, Department of Business Fire is not here. Did we... We still were working on the town of fire. Um, system. That was the top priority. Yes, and um, yes, and it's beeping again. And my guess is they're not aware of the six o'clock meeting time, and they'll okay. probably come. So if you it's wanted fine. to, do, you know, work on other things and come back, I'm sure they'll be here. Oh, can I go back? Yep, yeah, absolutely. Um, can we set a date to have resumes submitted by? Because often so you review them, <laughs> right? So when we if we get them like on September eighth, it's really hard to um, work with. Sure. So tell me what um, you'd like. Probably I'd say let's say the 30th. Um, so the 8th is Wednesday. Do you want them by this Friday is the 3rd. That gives you the weekend. Sure. If people can do that. Maybe Saturday because that gives them one weekend day if they really can't do it during the week. 
Oh, uh, sure. Yeah. Is that, are you okay with that, Paul? Yes. All right, let's start at 84. It's putting water back across the road. Apparently, there was a uh, septic system that jumped into the property across the road. Apparently, uh, this is only hearsay to me. I don't know the whole story. Uh, but to prevent that from happening again with water buildup or anything like that, it's only a small amount of, uh, of the hill. We can cut through the hill and ditch it down the road, let the water flow freely into the ditch where the water goes, the natural stream is. Uh, I talked to the homeowner that's right below that. We shouldn't have to cut into the driveway. We should be able to throw the water over the next driveway, but I'm just reporting if there's an issue, we may end up with the pelvic here. I don't believe there is. We may just have to slope the driveway a little bit to have the water flow free, which would be cheaper than cutting the road, putting a new pelvic in. And, uh, causing problems on the other side if you have a lot of water going onto the opposite side of the road. Okay. Well, we have two you understand people. what I'm trying to say? Two members. And, I and, see and that. Tom, I'm going to let them speak too. I just, uh, and Tom can lend some insight to it here too. One thing I'd like to do, George, unfortunately, is put eyes on what we're talking about. So I, know, I know exactly where you're talking about the Randall and Spencer's area is, but I don't, I'm not familiar exactly with the road itself. Um, is there somebody that has comments? I do. Um, Carrie Boyle, um, Spencer is my name, name, so for anyone who doesn't know, um, Clement Road. So um, prior to, let me just try to do a quick recap. So prior to this issue coming up in 2015, so back when Frida and Clayton Randall lived there, they had, their septic did back up and come across. And my parents, for over 30 years, that whole area was a huge garden. 
the state got the state came down, did sample testing down there. There was raw sewage on that side because my father um, he used to get very upset because it was all wet right there, and the tractor would get stuck when he was down there mowing. Um, and that's what it was. They had tested it, and raw sewage had come through because they did have a problem with the septic. Fast forward some years, um, the Randalls, um, now Matt and Kaz, were having issues, and they came to the town, um, and they said that it was blocked. They actually um, had said that it was blocked purposely on my parents' side, which it was not. Um, and I know that's the belief of some people in town, so, um, and my father's not here to defend himself, but that was not the case. Um, so anyway, um, my brother did have conversations with Jeff St. Jean. Um, it did come before the select board. I have scoured the minutes back of 2015 for the, the meeting minutes. I've also talked to Jody Lavoie Carnes, who was a board member at that time. So she can tell you, she could also, I think she's coming later, she can um, let you know what some of the discussions were at the board meetings. But in the end, um, that culvert was, not that it wasn't there, but it's not an approved culvert. It's been there. It was there prior to when my parents moved in over 50 years ago. Um, and so the water from that property, um, it's, not a, it's not a stream or anything. It's basically for surface water that would cross over onto my parents' property. So someone did come out and look at it. I know that Mr. Clark came out and looked at their septic system, which is raised. Um, they talked about the culvert. Um, I know the culvert, again, is not an approved one because it's for surface surface water coming across. Um, but I guess we would just um, like to, my mom, oh, and the town also at one point asked my parents, they said, as a resolution, would my parents give a right away to allow the town to come and clean it out? My parents said no, because they didn't want that cleaned out. Um, and then there were discussions at the select board meeting that if something was going to be done, I believe it was going to have to be the property owners, or if the town was going to get involved, the town would have to consider doing drainage or some type of ditching along that side of the road, down the hill to the other culvert, which I think is what we've been talking about again. So, um, that's it. Else? I think Matt is Hi. here. Hi. How are you? Oh, I don't know. I'm sorry, I thought this was 6.30. Yeah, well. I didn't find out that the night was sick either. Okay. Is there anybody else's comments on that? Okay. Yes, thank you. Um, Go ahead, John. Just basically to confirm, I was out there with Jeff St. Jean and met with Matt Randall, I think it was in 2017 or 2016. And I think the bottom line is, exactly as this young lady said, if that culvert is just left alone and the repair is done as George suggests, it's not going to be an issue. You don't have to take it out, you don't have to clean it, you don't have to, it's just not going to be an issue. The water that the plant that George is using will just avoid that altogether, go down the natural side of the road in the town right of way, so we wouldn't have to worry about any kind of easements into the color at the bottom of the hill. It, it's just, I think, a win-win. Right. Is that your recommendation, then, Tom? Yes, yes, I agree with George. I was out there about that today. Um, I also spoke to the lady at 109, um, Clement Road, which is on the corner of Clement and Glenview. Glenview, yeah. It's Glenview. The first house in Rome coming up on the right. And, um, she expressed no concern. Um, I guess her husband came out, so with George after that. We may not have to do anything in the driveway, but if we do, it's relatively painless. Um, but it's, I think it's definitely the way to go. That, that culvert, she's right, it's been there forever, and it's very, it, it's not effective. Okay. George, I'm, I'm going to say go ahead and do it, but I like to, I would like to, I don't know about you, but I'd like to just see the, the area just to make sure it's major, you know, I can go up, you know, I'm not trying to probably die, but I can see it tomorrow. Uh-oh. Yeah, tomorrow will be fine. Mr. Randall's here, so she might want to. Would you like to comment, Mr. Randall? I'm, I'm good with either way. Okay. You know, either, you know, 
keeping it as it is or creating a swale, whatever's going to prevent my yard from becoming a lake. Okay. Thank you. All right, thanks. I'm going to go over what you guys recommend doing. I just want to do one quick look and then when we plan on doing this? Well, we're going to put the culvert in tomorrow at the bottom, at the town line, because okay. we cleaned some of the swale up before that already. And it'll be probably, we were hoping to do it maybe tomorrow after the house. Depends how fast the project goes well, down there. Go ahead and do it as long as we're not going to be upsetting any residents. It seems like no, it's, it's a win win. So. The way it, it's, it should eliminate any problem. I mean, we're going to be raising the road another inch and a half, so that's going to continue to have the water off the edge of the road. And the road's going to have, when they pave it, should have a crown in it. So okay. that uh, should eliminate, you know, any problem. And like, like Tom said, he spoke with the uh, owner of 109. I spoke with the owner of 109 this afternoon, and he's fine. If we have to put a culvert in later on, if it causes an issue, we can do that. So it's, you know, I, I still say it's a win-win. Water's going to go where the water should be going and not to people's property. All right. I want to say go ahead and do it. Can we have any, any other concerns about it? No. All right. Go ahead and do it. I'm going to still try to get out there, but I might, I might see you up there more. Um, okay. So that the covered road. So road service and management plan. I know we're not going to cover a whole lot tonight. Do you have any, any other information on what we want to bring up on that? The road, the road service and management plan. I believe there's money in the budget for to have the road service and management plan. I came in under what Stratton Regional was proposing to do a service, a road service management plan, where we, plan where we would ride around with them. They have a way of researching which roads should be done for us and what have you. And have some of our input and see where we can go. I mean, I, I wrote one up and I, you people both have it, I believe. But just what we suggest. But I think, you know, Stratford Regional has been doing this for a long time apparently and we probably ought to have another look at what some of these other roads are. I mean, since I've been here, we've been picking away at, we didn't follow the road plan like it should be. We took the worst roads first. So, I mean, again, uh, downtown is going to need a lot of work. The infrastructure down there is, I mean, the roads are in pretty rough shape in the downtown area, which is also going to need some work on the infrastructure, which is rebuilding some of the manholes, et cetera. And to be honest with you, what's in the budget for road maintenance is not going to uh, gain us any time every year if we're going to do one or two streets. I think it's going to have to be time to start looking at a different source of funding or what have you to take care of the roads. But again, that's in the budget items, so we can talk about that. All right. Um, so, question for you, George. If we move forward with this um, strapping the regional plan, what's the likelihood we're going to have results from that that we can use um, for the money that you've requested for the next year? Not like that. It, it would help for the following budget cycle, but not like this. Because, mm -hmm. because I, kind of, I don't, I, I'm not familiar with what the, the plan is. I just knew there was money put aside to have a plan that would probably, you know, more thorough than what Ed and I could do, you know, riding around. That being said, I don't know what their schedule is, and I don't know what your expectation is for when you'd want to know this information. So if you're willing to make a last minute adjustment to that budget line, then Potentially, it could be done this fall, but I, I'm thinking if you really want it done by the end of September by your first meeting with the Budget Committee, that's not likely. But um, this fall at some point with a last minute to be possible. And I can find out if you want it. Um, so, so I think um, I think, well, I think definitely George makes a good point that it's a major subject, um, yes. you know, that we're not probably going to need to talk. Um, but so under under the same um, line, um, I was hoping that we'd see a short-term plan for um, the roads that you're proposing for this next budget season because there's a pretty significant increase in that line item. Um, so I think before we you know, can say, yes, we're going to approve $350,000 this year. We want to kind of get a plan, a short-term plan for that. Okay. I just got to know which way you guys, what you want to go, which way you want to go on roads. The only one I have concerns about getting done right away is Jesse Bear next year, so 
we'll discuss this with the company's not the budget time. We could probably operate with what we had last year, which was nine hundred thousand dollars decrease from two years ago. So again, we're not gaining by cutting. Right. And one yeah, one of the years we have to provide more money to try to get four or five years. We're going to discuss that. Um, At some point, you know, we may have to, you know, if we get a plan, we may have to consider bonding. You know, but I think that we need a plan to consider that and bring that forward. Okay. Um, the there's also an email I got, I believe, from Maureen. Do you want to comment anything about the, you uh, know, some about highways and roads and stuff? Yes. Um, I was just going to say that when we first did the St Stratford County Regional Planning thing about um, almost, I don't know, quite a few years ago, they came in and gave us a plan that would have cost us a bunch, but we were able to get it for free because we were a test case. So they came in with a plan that we were able to use to try to think about how we would do resurfacing um, in future years. It saved us some dough in the long run because basically they could point to different roads and decide, well, this road is used as a cut road, this road is used heavily, this is, is by trucks, this is by cars, whatever they were doing with their traffic plan. And then they could tell us which roads should be, just need very light um, crack and seal versus um, perhaps just a resurfacing versus a rebuild. And once you know that, then it's easier for somebody like George or anybody in the highway department to look at this and say, yeah, we know this is going to be a high impact area. We better do this one first, even though the road down here, which is never used, is worse. So that's the kind of thing that you can get a gain from it. Right. And I know, I know, uh, I know you're really pushing for Jesse Bell because, I mean, I know really probably it's the most, very possibly the most used road in town. So between that, the plan we're talking about, about the roads that we need to fix. The problem is there's other roads, you know, right. like Lorraine yeah. says, that are in really rough shape, but they're traveling on very minimal. Right, that's, so, that's the key here. One of the things I see with Traffic Regional, they, they can see the road, and they're not seeing what's under that road. And every time we go into the road to fix it, we're finding out that there's no substructure to support the roads. So that, again, changes the whole right. scenario of what's happening because we have to put a lot more money into that project than we had planned initially. Like Woods Run, we ended up putting gravel in Woods One. Heritage Drive, we found a garage, a building inside the road. That's what was causing the roller coaster. You know, I mean, that's not stuff I did, you know, and, and we're not finding much gravel in some of these roads. Of course, Sligo Road was a mess. That, anybody in this room that says anything differently, you know, it was a hush path, basically. So I that road had agree, to be fixed. But that's a low travel road. So how do you determine, you know, what's high travel and what's low travel? They have criteria and measures for that. But that, so what do we know where that ranked in terms of level of travel? We would get a lot, we would get the complaints with which run, you know, we did which run, and then we go into that other road that's falling apart. And uh, there is a lot of traffic on one end of Sligo Road versus right. the other end of Sligo Road. So we're spending a lot of money in coal patching and stuff because there was no substructure to that road. I mean, and that's one reason. Now that whole side of town is done. Let's concentrate on trying to get this side of town up and running. That's what we're going to do. But you know, you, you, do, you, do, you do have a good point, though. I'm sure there's residents in town that are saying, I mean, why slide will be made when the road I would want is from one. So. And, and, and that's what's good about this plan is that they're not residents, they're objective, they're using data to figure this out, and that way when residents come, you have a thoughtful plan that comes from a data-based approach rather than the resident who's most upset this year. Yeah, I think that is definitely coming forward and getting involved to them later. I'm um, George, you're going to have any PO tonight? I don't have any PO, but what are you doing about the budget? Yep. Right. Yeah, we're trying to kind of slim down this agenda tonight so we can get through the budgets as well. So. Yep. Did you um, want to go through and ask um, them now and get it over with? Or? I don't see why not. Sure. Yep. That's a temporary result. Okay, I know you want to keep the budget as long as I need to hold the budget. Yep. Close to as possible to what it was. 
However, uh, I think we've got to start looking at salaries of our people. So my, my budget this year is based basically on salaries, and we'll try to keep everything else close to the same.
part time positions, I think you need to do a scale for uh, positions that, that people work for us, like the truck driver without a CDL and stuff like that. I think we should have a set raise on getting them up to uh, like starting at 15, 15. If you have a CDL, uh, that's a truck driver laborer. Uh, a pickup truck driver, we could drive a smaller truck, and be just a laborer at 1550. A truck driver with an architect can operate, you know, give him an extra buck an hour. But I'd just like to raise that part time lineup at, uh, where are we? Yeah, I'd like to raise the part time lineup about $4,600 for 25000 so we could get these guys, you know, a little bit more money and have some flexibility, I mean, when, if we have a project and we need some extra help. So, um, so one of the things that I, I know historically, um, the town has done across the board raises and it's normally been about 2%. Um, and one of the things that I've asked for year over year is job descriptions, yep. performance reviews, and in fact, our policy manual says that we should be doing that, but we don't do any of that, and we're kind of limited on job descriptions. So I think um, what we need to consider for this year is um, is a reasonable um, increase with the contingency that we are actually we, we have job descriptions, and we even have basic job um, performance reviews, really simple performance reviews. Um, so I think that would be one of my requirements is. Um, what can we? What is um, reasonable for this coming year, and how do we get to that point? Right. One of the other issues that the town is facing, obviously that everyone is facing, is with the labor shortage, and wages have gone up a lot for all wages. That I understand what Kim's saying. I also understand that we do need to address the current situation. So we're kind of stuck in a rock and hard place right now to figure out how we're going to run. You're not the only one that's going to be able to put the reasons for all this stuff. And I highly understand that. You know, and that's, that's why I try to keep my budget down until I could and deal with getting some of these people up to some way yeah, close to where we should be. Uh, I, I do appreciate that. And that may be a way to accommodate our workers and you know, bring a little bit of line item budget slightly down to accommodate our workers. May be a way to address it. We, I mean, we won't have to go line by line on my budget. There's only no. two items that I raised, yep. uh, which, like, vehicle maintenance, I think we should bring back up to 20000 the vehicles, you know. Uh, that was what it was a couple of years ago. We've had, we've had a couple of successful years without much maintenance done on the vehicles and turned some money back. But this year, the back always cost us a lot of money in repairs, and then we had to have the big truck fixed. You know, so the budget was gone basically back in February. Uh, so I think we need to get that 5000 back on that line. Um, so I, I agree with Paul, I and mean, I feel like we need to strike a balance somewhere where we're taking care of our employees, but we're also considering our residents. Um, so I'm sure we'll, we'll have more discussions when we go to select right. more budget workshop. And uh, there was a tree maintenance line needs to go up some trees, uh, we got the lot of dead trees in town that we get some liabilities to worry about. I need to get a PO, I, I didn't get the PO for Urban, but we need to get something signed to get that on the schedule by December, so I'll try to get, I don't have it with me tonight, but I'll get it, you know, as soon as possible for that, but uh, he's got us on the schedule in December, but, and like, I don't have the price with me right now, and I don't have a PO. Well, I'm thinking of it, George, I got an action item that's been on my minutes for a little bit. My neighbor across the street is the one who I believe schedules all the cuttings for Rollinson. He works with Comcast. And so I'm going to try to, I won't try, I'll talk to him this week to get a date up. If he has an idea when they're going to go through and cut all these, a lot of these dead trees they got marked with the blue ribbons. There's some on Bay Road, some of you might be talking about. all over the place. I mean, with, you know, no, if, if, it's, if it becomes a safety hazard and we need to cut them, we'll cut them. What I've, I'm called, saying is I've like called several companies and I haven't gotten no return to even give estimates that it's so far out. Wow. Okay. And uh, you know, like his work to get the to get the Sligo Road this year to get use the money we have, it's gonna put us like he said, he ain't even gonna be able to cut so free until December he has to hire a crane and everything else, right. you know. But there's supposed to be a time and it's gonna be between now and winter that they're gonna come like they did a couple of years ago and 
Yeah, and and trees that those are trees are gone. In line we got other trees that we could take. Okay. But, uh, Being aware of that, as you probably know. Right? Those, those, two, those two or three trees in the area we uh, run, has the I put some money in the road budget to try to get it back. That is one line. If you want to cut it back, that's fine. We can work with that this year and still get Jesse Doe fixed, and there may be a few other overlays in town. But uh, we have to talk about you know what we what are our priorities going to be. Right. Um, do, you, do you think you could put together a list of what you would like to see done this year out of this budget? Pretty much, I, I okay. Do, and is there any way that we could get like estimates on this um, instead of just throwing out a number and figuring out what we could get in there? Do they, they, will they, is it too far in advance so to get estimates? Estimate, yeah. yeah, I, I can get estimates of the road. So, you know, but I'd like to know which way you want to point me in. Uh, which road you want to want done first? You know that's the other thing. I mean, Jesse Doe's price will probably go up on this year's price, but uh, you know then we can work on that. But that one, yeah, again, the road's like the other one, so nothing doesn't need to be solved. So, so um, do, do we need to? Uh, do you want to like point out the worst condition roads and let us go out and take a look at them and then make a decision? Yeah, I think we we going have to ride around and see some of these roads anyway and see where we should go. Especially if we can, you know, if we're going to overlay some roads, we can gain, you know, a, a little bit more, you know, for our bank for our park. We try not to have to get into, you know, wherever it is. When you start getting into roads that have storm drains and manholes in the middle, that's all costly work. That has to be done to fix some of these to get them straightened out. So, you know, we can look at the roads and we can make a decision of what you people want to do. I'm just going to make suggestions that, yep. you know, that, that uh, how many roads did we do this year? How many roads did we do this year? Well, now that we're doing climbing roads, we've been, we overlaid all the slide goes and that road is finished. We're doing the climbing uh, road, and we just overlaid, trim and overlaid. So that, you know, that'll buy us some time before we have to get back out there. Again, high traffic road, but it's a little bit better shape, we'll have another layer of hot top on it, so I'll gain a few years on that. Uh, but uh, so we're we'll using some of the money to do out front. So, so only two roads this year? Just two roads, yeah. I, I would encourage you to think of roads in terms of lane miles rather than number of roads, because right. although it's only two roads, it's mm -hmm. a larger portion of our road than if we did 3rd Street and 2nd Street, for example. How, how many miles do you How many miles have you well, got? Well, Sligo's two miles. Really? Yep. There's a mile each year. Well, just so it's a mile 1.8. 1 1.8. 1 1 yeah, just under a mile on the other one. Okay. Uh, and then Clement Road, I'm not exactly sure how long that road was, but. Probably not a mile. No, it's not a mile. Maybe half to three quarters of a mile of that. It is three quarters. I walk it all the time. What is it? Three quarters. Okay. So, so you, you will have done less than three roads on uh, three, uh, three miles for $255,000? $255,000, yeah. well, in the 17 we're spending here, so, yeah. You know, I, I mean, a lot of stuff was pushed, you know, can't push the infrastructure away. That stuff that's got to be maintained, and uh, like I said, when you start getting into that kind of road work, it's costly. If I have anything else, I don't think I... The, the line of fuel, uh, I didn't. I don't know putting that in, but I think that should say it for what we were at 8,000. Uh, I, I wrote 85 down by mistake. I, I was looking at the wrong side of it. I looked at the... Uh, what I proposed last year, the 8,000, I think, would be sufficient. To, uh, and I still, I don't know how we can be so low on what we use so far. That's, that's what I'm concerned about. Oh, you don't think that the numbers are up to date? I don't think that, I don't know. If, I mean, the $2,200 for fuel might be correct. But I'm, I'm thinking that's low so far. Well, uh, I see 8,000. going down any. I said 8,500 for fuel. No, 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 no. I'm talking about usage so far. Oh, yeah, it seems like it's way down compared to what we used last year, which I find, you know, a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay.
I know some of the money we didn't use both yeah. amounts, like on pet base and stuff like that. So uh base and stuff. So I didn't want to come up to change none of the other numbers to leave that the way it is. Uh, I didn't put anything into rental equipment. Okay. Uh, but I, I think we may be all set next year as far as I mean it'd be nice to be able to do some shoulder work and, uh, and renting equipment is probably the idea the idea it is the idea where to go. So if, if there's a way you can put that six thousand back in for maybe a month or two of rental to do some shoulder work around the streets that haven't been done in years, like Clement Road. If we're doing some of the shoulder work, you know, the, the ditch work where the water runs, not so much the shoulders. But I think you know, we got to start doing some ditch work, ditching in town that the roads are having. By your house, you know, completely do that road and get it done so the water runs freely. Uh, but uh, that 6000 probably would not be a bad thing to keep in there if possible. Like, again, we can, you know, we got things to do so I mean, we can keep the line as close as we can. But what we were is, like I said, I want to concentrate on case. Thank you. Anything for me? No, no. Not yet. There will be, though. Yep. Oh, I'm sure. Be quite a bit of that. <laughs> I'm sure. You want to say that? Thank you. Thank you, George. Okay. Good evening, man. Good evening. Good, thanks. I have no PO's or anything. So, just smoking. Yeah. Go over the budget if you wish. Yeah. 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 My budget is. Uh, up is up like the rest of them. Uh, looking at, like George explained, was uh, you know manpower. We are down one and a half people right now, or one person. We're down by. Back when I took over, we had three people working all three days, Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. Uh, as attrition took a couple of people out, we replaced. One person. We're, we're just using two people right now. I'd like to get back to the three people uh, for the three days that we're open. Okay. Three full time. Well, full time people as the number of hours we're open. So you have three on Saturday. I have three on Saturday. And that's, but I, you feel that's enough? No. What I'd like to do is three during the week, Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday, and a fourth on on Saturday. And that's what I've proposed with my budget this year, which would get us back to where we were. And also trying to get the wages up some. We're trying to match the lowest paid person at the transfer station to the lowest paid person at the highway. So if we're shuffling the person back and forth, they're getting the same money at each place. Um, I think I explained that out in my, the little narrative section to the right of the budget. Yeah. The rest of the budget, uh, other than taxes to go with the manpower, stays exactly the same. I'm waiting on one more year of running these numbers, and I think I'm going to see some spots where I'll be able to lower some numbers in a, possibly next year. Uh, I just want to see how they how they play out. What it is is the hauling and the disposal fees. So it's an educated guess as to how much trash and how much devil we're going to get right. every year. Go down, go up easily. Right. Right. So I'm trying to keep those numbers where they are right now, and after I get about three years of average, I'll be able to know can I drop that by, you know, a thousand, five thousand, whatever it may be. Okay. So really, your your really want to pull those up in there a little bit is just getting the wages. It's, it's strictly employees. in the wages, and in adding that third person back to our three days that we're open and adding a fourth person for the six hours we're open on Saturday. Okay. That's it. It's pretty straightforward. Yeah, uh, I did include a wage survey that we did in 2020. I see that. Uh, I'm sure we could try to redo that. I think if we redo it, those numbers are going to go up. So I'm happy using what we did last year. So I think it's a, a fair increase for the guys for what they do. And as you know, we've had some issues with improper dumping, not dumping in the right spots. 
And that's directly related to not having enough eyes on the transportation on a daily basis. So uh, I got a proposal there. I mean I, I agree with you on uh, I can't speak for China, but I agree with you on the fourth post on Saturday. And probably more than likely on weekdays too, but yep. uh, we need a little more convince them of that. Okay. Well, like and then the wages we talked, and I know yeah. we got some hard decisions to make because sure. the people, our employees, I feel, are getting underpaid in current wages compared to, you know, around the area yes. in the last year. So I think they were slightly underpaid prior to everything that's happened over this last year, you know. So this last year, things have this year, actually, things have exploded wage-wise. Almost a ridiculous explosion. Uh, last year, the guys were underpaid somewhat. So, yeah. Uh, to have two guys on, like today, uh, let's say Monday, so we have, we're open right now 2 to 7. So there's only two guys working. One guy down in the Cowboy building, that also handles the demo, and one guy up on the top that handles the the baler, I mean the uh, the compactor and the recycler. So, you know, if the guy that guy's pretty much busy up top doing that. The the gentleman that works down in the cardboard, if he's making a bale of cardboard, he has to stop and help uh, someone that comes in with demo and points them in the right, you know, collects the, the fees and points them in the right direction. If someone comes in with other questions, he's going to stop and help that as well. So the, the third person would primarily be down in the cardboard building helping that gentleman, you know, that employee. I try to stay away from using names because no, they understand. can change it at high speed. Uh, so that would give us two people in the cardboard building, one to help cardboard and one to do uh, demo, pretty much. Demo, scrap metal, that sort of thing. Watching where things go. Uh, more, more, almost the ad person, I guess, would be the way to put the calling. So, and I do have, uh, I think I've given you, I don't know if you took them actually, the job descriptions, okay, for everybody that works there. Nice. So we do have that in place. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to spread this out that, you know, probably in the last month I've had at least four or five residents tell me, or was excited about the, People at the dump help them out. Um, we get to know who they are. Mm -hmm. Elderly residents, and yep. you know, one resident I won't say the name was explaining that she doesn't even get out of the car. So that's much appreciated, and um, it's good feel for the people. I mean, yeah. it's good service up here. So I yeah. just want to say thanks for that. Sure. I'll pass it on to the guys. It's direct, direct relation to what they do over there. I just oversee it. <laughs> and they're the ones that hands on. And how many people cross over between highway and um, just one person typically? Okay. Well, yeah, two. right now just one. If we need, yeah. But you're looking for two, right? Well, we yeah. have. I guess I'll have to use names in this case. We have Gary Karen who works Saturday. He crosses over to highway on a fairly regular basis when we need uh, when we need either the fourth person or if my city's not available, he'll come over. For instance, tomorrow we're doing a culvert. I'll shift to the highway. We're doing a culvert on Clement Road. Uh, Mike Spinney's not available. He's working fire tomorrow, so we have Gary coming in. So that gives Paul, Gary, and myself to do that. And we have uh, Norm Giroux doing the excavation side of it. So very rarely do we bring a second person from highway over. I mean, from uh, transfer station. And that would be Paul if we had to. But primarily, it's Gary. Now that Gary's retired from his other job, so. And if I'm fortunate enough to get a third person to work all three days that we're open, I know it probably has to go out and be advertised. But Gary is available and willing to take that position. So. Okay. Good. Yeah. So we have a and he's already trained and licensed. Yeah. Daily. You know, might be do some of that extra money and you do bailing while they were over there. I was bailing 
bailing you out the you know, when the transfer station's open. If the guy's not busy, they can Yeah, but uh, yeah, but we can't, yeah. That could be, almost could be a little bit of a cost savings by having that third person. Because we would free up during the week a person to uh, call these, for instance, to bail aluminum or bail plastic and have Gary watch the cardboard building. Right now, when Paul goes over to bail while we're open, there's no attendance at the cardboard building. So we try not to do that. So Paul comes in on his off days and does the bailing for a couple, two or three hours. Is there someone else that needs to do that? We're around usually at highway. No safety concerns or I'm just asking. No. There's nothing you have to get up into or anything like that. It's all done with the skid scan. Yep. So, Good. Other than physical time, the wires and the machines running when you're doing that. So, I mean, there's a lot of benefits to adding that third person during the week. So, and the fact that we were at that level uh, about three years ago, but wanted to try it with less people to see how it would work. It worked okay, but it isn't, it's not the, not the best setup. And we really like to get that third person back. Thanks, Thank you. And that's my budget in a nutshell. Everything else, like I say, is exactly the same. Perfect. Uh, no reason to read it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to have John go next to the last city. Just do it at the budget. Yeah, I'm still carrying library, which is good. So you're ready to present? I, I can wait. Okay. Security and um, until you get your mm -hmm. Yeah, unless fire shows up. Well, the fire was out. Well, uh, Why don't you go ahead and do a budget and we'll hit fire up next? Me? Okay. Uh, unless cemetery or library wants to go first because they were here first. I would love to go first. Okay. <laughs> so I assume that you got my, our. Thank you, Celia. No problem. Um, I think that you got our uh -huh. budget and our narrative, which pretty much describes um, what we have going on for our budget. We're putting our budget as a overall one point three. Yeah, I saw that. Um, there is one. I did notice as I was sitting here reviewing this. There is one error on the budget we submitted for my salary. It says 10.4% increase, where it's actually 1% increase. So the issue with the, the formula and the um, spreadsheet, I couldn't it. But it's, the math, the math is right. It's only 1% increase. Um, we are asking for an increase in capital improvement. We have two computers that we use to do all of the library like business and then our circulation computers are about to die. They're, they're both close to 10 years old. Um, and then the other increase was we did add a line for Google, which is a digital service that we added during the pandemic. It's been very popular. Um, in 2020, we added it as a line item with no amount. We did, pay, we did ask to pay the town to pay $1,000 to, to yeah. We paid $1,000 for it, and then we got the rest of the money that we paid for it uh, in, a, in a program. Okay. Yeah, so do you guys actually, you guys see the we did, yes. <laughs> okay. Now and then, uh, I'll definitely review my campaign. And if we have questions, maybe we can call back. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to go through these again. Because some of them came late, so we don't necessarily have time to do them. Yeah. Um, but we can do them now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, that's no, this, was, this came a while ago, it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. I don't, I don't really have a particular question on this, but it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. Yeah. Good time to remind the board since it's been a whole year, and you know, Kim, you're new to this part of this. But the library, um, the library budget proposal is sent by the library trustees, so it's it's different from the other departments in that way. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I might have for the cemetery. Okay. One of the trustees, normally my teacher does this, but we get called away on chunk notice, so it's not quite as tough on the okay. season, but we work through the budget together. Basically, nothing has changed except the cost of the money to the cleanup. Uh, we were able to get the person doing it to hold the price of the cleanup.
2020 budget and then camp hasn't happened. So we are hoping that the community will accept the new tuition rates of $100 per week. Um, so if we look at how much the camp brings in versus how much the camp is expected to go out, there's a difference of about $300 in the positive. So we're going to have like a, a there's wiggle room of about $300. Um, and that, when we raise the tuition, we also raise the wages for the staff, which then raise the ta payroll taxes and so forth, and the funding for um, their training. So um, we're up to um, 34000 Twenty dollars for nine counselors at an average of thirteen fifty an hour. Uh, we in 2019 and 2020 we talked to some counselors who said that they would not be able to come back and make a living based on the wage that we were paying them before. Um, so the there is a twenty dollar. Oh, I should say. I'm going to switch over here to my talking points. Um, so, um, so tuition would be $100 per week for residents when registering by the week. If they register for the whole summer, they get a reduction of uh, one free week. Um, so it would be $700 if you register your camper. This is not included in this anyway. This is the plan of the committee. Um, out of town campers who we've serviced in the past would pay at least $25 more per week than um, we, and there is no full summer camp or weekly camp discount for out of town residents. They pay the set price no matter what. Um, there had been a family discount for siblings of 10% in the past up to five children, but there are no longer families that have three or more children. They've all aged out of our program. Um, but we have to look into new programs and see what that is. Um, there is a possible cost savings that we may not have a field trip um, the week of the 4th of July because field trips have been traditionally planned on Mondays. And um, the 4th of July is Monday in 2022. And then for staffing, we talked about the wage increase. Um, we are also expecting less staff because we're expecting less campers. In the past, we've had anywhere from 100 to 125 campers. With the camp not happening the last couple of years and people aging out, we're expecting we have less campers than previously. And we've changed our ratio. We changed it in the fall of 2019, instead of being a staggered ratio, higher for the younger kids and lower for the older kids, we've made it a general um, one to eight ratio. And then we can work staff where we need to. Like if younger kids need more assistance, we can have it. And then the older kids could be a one to 10 or a one to 12 ratio. Um, there's a potential cost savings in the staffing line. if we get staff that have already had background checks that we don't need to do, and if they have um, training of CPR and first aid already on hand, or if they miss the scheduled training that we put forth with the fire department, then it becomes their responsibility according to the uh, staff handbook that they get their own training and provide it. Otherwise, they cannot maintain their employment with us. Um, winter rec lines have taken a huge jump um, there is a desire in the community to bring back the ice rink. Um, we did a survey a couple years ago, and that was the number one thing that was talked about when we were asking about senior programming, is where is the ice rink going to come back? So we've been investigating it, and um, to get an ice rink that we would like, it's movable, and it would just like snap together and we could put it where it used to be next to the fire department or on. We need to talk to the cemetery trustees and see if it can go maybe on the ball field without damaging it. 
and we're looking between five and ten thousand dollars for what we want for the ice rink and we would need to talk to this board also about um, maintenance and if we need to do it all or if we work in partnership with other town employees storage set up and take down what the community has to offer and what we need to be responsible for um, and then if we can get the ice rink we can charge a small fee and we can have fundraisers there so we can offset some of that revenue but first we need to get the ice rink so it's in there but we understand that we may not be able to get all that money at this time the other winter rec lines um, basketball and soccer are able to provide offsetting revenue at times when we have enough kids to support a team or if we choose to charge for the open gyms if we don't have enough kids for a team um, each player pays $35 to participate in the program um, it doesn't cover all of the costs but it helps offset the cost and then if we don't get enough kids for the team we open it up to the community for an adult drop-in and we could ask for a donation of a small amount for them to come and play in the gym and stuff like that and the school does not offer us any money or does not charge us for using their facilities as long as it's safe to use um soccer indoor soccer um they got their equipment at the end of 2019 so it's fairly new and they do not need it um and they weren't able to complete their season at the end of through March of 2020 because of COVID hitting, they were abruptly cut off. So that equipment has not been used since 2020. And then the other thing that drove up our budget a lot um, and makes up for the 20,000 or so difference between anticipated revenue and um, expenditures is the rec director we've asked for it for the last several years um, so in the document I sent the last page was a workup done by one of our committee members um, it may not have been printed out it's uh, on the workbook I sent it's the rec director breakdown um, based on $15 an hour $18 an hour and $20 an hour rec directors in the area when we met with one in 2018 or 2019 we're getting anywhere from 18 to 25 dollars an hour so i am sure that is gone up from there um and we are as a committee willing to look at other options for funding this position from working to unh where they would split the cost with us 50 50 they would pay 50 percent if it was like a student intern we would pay 50 percent as a town so we wouldn't have to do that um to cutting the co the rec director's hours down cutting the pay down and working with the school maybe having a teacher do it that could just do it for a couple hours a week we have all sorts of options that we would like to discuss with the select board on how we could possibly hire somebody and make it feasible for the town um when the employees hired um the we could postpone it to hiring in the summer we could hire a rec director for camp raleigh and ask that person to stay on so maybe it's not a full year but a partial year of um budgeted amount there um and whether that person is the same person will determine if we have any wiggle room because the camp raleigh director is a set salary too so if it's the same person we might they might not get as much money as we allotted in our budget um and uh, hiring a recreational director could generate additional town revenue through different sources like obtaining fees through classes and different activities we do grants and partnerships with different groups that we work with the state of new hampshire also has some different funding sources like a recreational revolving fund that would help the town and could help offset the financial burden on the tax base for a rec director um, but the avenue needs this avenue needs to be explored more with the rec committee and the select board and determine if it's something we want it would require a warrant article on the town ballot 
Um, so between the ice rink and the rec director, we're looking at a difference of $20,000 um, roughly above and beyond um, what Camp Raleigh brings in. And they both could offset um, potentially with collecting fees and holding tournaments and so forth. So that's my little speed. You're good. Um, I don't have any questions. I'm pretty familiar with this. I was just when Kim gets back, I'll see she's getting caught on questions, but she'll probably she'll probably digest stuff and have questions if someone guessed later on. Yes, and I just ran through a lot of information. You did. Yep. You did go. Um and Caroline, you read? I'm sure I'm fine. Do you need to say I'm not doing it? I'm just supposed to log into your tonight or I can give another time. You, uh, so you to and I'm going to read some stuff you don't want to I'm going to read through it more carefully. Yeah, and I can send you some of the stuff I just talked about right. that's not included. That'd be great. All right, thank you. No, no problem. What up, John? Oh, all right. Please. Okay. So, um, this was an interesting year going into 2022. So we had to add several lines, and one being $15,000 for a prosecutor and $12,000 for an admin assistant. So I had to figure out how to do that. So what I ended up doing was, and Kim and I work on the budget together, I have my DAs on, so there's no surprises to her here. Um, I had to make a decision, because we had that open salary line, and it was my lieutenant line before I got promoted. So what I decided to do instead of pursue that six full-timer was to leave the full-timers at uh, five, and that deducted $68,072 that I could move around now within the budget. Uh, what that also did was to retirement added another $13,604 available as well, because now the town isn't paying that. And there will also be more money in the lines for health insurance, because now the town won't have to pay for that. So that helped me move around the money that I needed to get my total budget $906 less than the current one we're operating on. So what I did was I started with the salaries, and I did send to Kim a salary comparison where if you look at what a Dover sergeant makes to give you an idea where we are, um, I'm the highest paid in the department, and I'm comparable with a Dover sergeant. So I put a $4,000 increase in my line. Um, Sergeant Hancock, I feel, is underpaid as well. So I also put a $4,000 into his pay line, which would bring him from $24.95 currently to $26.87. And then Officer Brooks, I wanted to spread him out from the, the two new officers that are starting at 22. So. He's at 24, so I gave him 2,500 to get him to 2,520. And then both new officers would receive a 50 cents pay raise after completion of the academy, which would be a thousand dollars a piece. So that's the salaries. Um, next was the prosecution line. So we had to add a brand. This year it wasn't funded, so we took it out of uh, salaries. So for next year, it's its own line, and we put in 15000 for that. That's already a contract that I've been given by our prosecutor, so she's already said this is what it will be for next year. Now, as far as the admin assistant, again, that wasn't budgeted. I wanted to bring her from $18 to $19 an hour, because she's done an amazing job. So that would be $12,000 that was allocated to that line. And again, it's a new line. Uh, this IT storage line that you see for 7000 that is something that I put in there and I still need to do some research. But after meeting with CIP, <coughs> we talked about going to the body cameras maybe next year instead of 2023. And the reason for that is just because everything that's going on in this world and everything going on in police work, I just truly really feel the sooner we have them, the better it's going to be for our citizens, for the officers, and it, it's just going to be better all the way around. It tells a different story. And right now, we just have the crew of cameras. So they only show what's in front of you. So if an officer goes left, right, or behind, it 
doesn't show up. Yeah. There was also in the MRI report they can right. get up to speed, so I don't know the so, And I, I, I do need to do some more research on that, but as a starting point, I allocate $7,000 to that line. Because the cameras themselves are really a one-time, yeah, you have to replace them here and there, but they're not the expense, it's the storage. Because we're going to have to follow different rules as far as storing stuff. And some could be a week, it could be 90 days, it could be three years depending on what the incident is. So that's where the cameras get expensive is in the storage. Do you know if there's any state or federal aid that can be used to accommodate, help accommodate? There is some federal grants out there that I'm going to look into. All right. So again, this was just for a starting point, yep. just to put a line in there. So um, contracted services. This line drives me a little bad. Um, that is does not affect the, affect the tax rate, and the town charges $75 an hour for contracted services. The officers only get 45 but we have to put a number in there. It really shouldn't matter if that number is one or a million or how hard you run it into the red, but the way the town does it's a little weird. So I actually have to put a number in there and find money if we go over that number. Even though the town's getting it all back, they don't, it all goes in the general fund. So that 45 an hour the officer gets doesn't actually go back into the line to replace the money that he was paid, even though it's just a recurring line, because it's all contracted services, which is uh, details for Eversource or Lewis Tree or something like that. So that line's a little deceiving, but to make sure that I don't have to worry about going over it, we put 15,000 extra into it to bring it to 55,000. Because if you look back in, uh, 2019, I believe, we had to find 22,000 because we worked out many details that year. And I don't want to have to try and find money even though it's all come back plus some. So and maybe we can discuss that down the road, but it doesn't affect the tax rate at all. Okay. Uh, payroll taxes, that's the number that you see there from uh, Caroline. Retirement's the new number. By taking that position out, you see we're 1,013,604. So that's what we won't have to pay in. Uh, then the health stayed the same. Uniforms, because of the new people coming on, I actually put 1250 into that line just to make sure everyone's always going to have good looking uniforms. And if they rip or get torn or anything happens, they can be replaced easy enough. Good. Uh, hazardous cleaning, I left alone. Professional development, that's our training line. And this was a big uh, recommendation by MRI as well. Right now, there's only 4,000. I put another 10,000 into that to bring it to 14. The better you train your officers, the less likely you are to get sued. And they're going to be out there doing the right thing. I can't speak enough for training. There's a lot of trainings out of college down in Rhode Island. Um, Will's already gone to one. I've gone through them down there. Mitch is going to go, but they're pricey. You have to, for the good training, you have to pay the price. And there's, right now, the academy is still trying to figure out code of protocols. They're not doing the trainings like they used to. So you have to go to these outside places. And again, this was a big one on MRI was pushing as well. So that's why I added the uh, 10,000 into that one. Yeah, I can see it with two patrolmen who have a little cost. We could all use training, every one of us. There's, there's a lot of things that I go by every day and go, wow, I've never seen that one before. Okay. Uh, conference dues, left that alone. Uh, office, office expenses, I put an extra 200 in there just because now we do have a uh, prosecutor and an ad admin assistant. So more is going out than before. So I figure stamps and paper. Uh, telephone and cellular. For some reason we kept coming in over budget on cellular. So I adjusted that and I'd also like to look at getting uh, Sergeant Hancock a phone at some point. So I did put 800 into that. So that's why you see that increase. And that will also take care of why we were going over. So apparently that was underfunded to, from last year. So that's just an adjustment to get funded right. Uh, postage. We went up 500, again, that's because of the amount of stuff now going out, having a full-time prosecutor and a, well, a part-time admin assistant. 
uh, manuals and publications, I actually took 100 out of, because we never seem to go over that. Uh, advertising I left alone. Uh, equipment, this goes back to the CIP as well. I added $4,000 to that equipment line, and instead of spending 25000 to replace all the computers at once, we're going to try and start replacing one MTD, which is the cruiser computer, and one desktop every year. So that's why that money is added into that. So we'll do it over a gradual time instead of just the big chunks. So that was actually taken out of the CIP and just worked into this one. Okay. Uh, radio repair, we actually took 500 out of because we haven't gone near that line at all. Mileage. We're proposing 2000 for this upcoming year, and that's because we have to pay mileage to the recruits to drive the condo. So, and that comes out to $93 per week for 16 weeks. Okay. So that's why that went up. Uh, supplies stayed the same. Uh, forms, we took 160 out of because we haven't gone near that number. Vehicle repairs and maintenance, I added 2053. We blew through that line this year and it's just the nature of the beast, they need to be repaired. So that they had money taken out of that, I just put the money back in. Uh, vehicle fuel had a thousand taken out, I just put the thousand back in. With the two uh, new guys being that will be on the staff, I anticipate you know, fuel being used more than it is now, obviously. So vehicle repair for a second, I mean, I can understand what you're talking about, but when you cruise the hell, they should be Less maintenance. We would hope. <laughs> but we still have the older two as well. Sure. So we, yeah. we have two brand new basically and two elderly. Let's yeah. put it that way. Right. The miles are going up quick on the other two. Uh, ammo. I added 1800 to the ammo line. Yeah. Again, being up the staff mm -hmm. and with the price going through the ceiling. That makes sense. We anticipate that going up. Uh, first aid left alone. Dispatch I left alone. Uh, there we left alone, and that brings the total to 622780, which again is $906 less than the 2021 budget. So what I really did was try and work within the budget and reallocate the money to where it was needed. Thank you, Who worked on this for you? This, uh, last week? Uh, uh, yeah, good. All right, so she's that uh, I want to read through those anyway. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Um, so you have no questions, right? All right, thanks. And the only other thing I have is, is there an answer on the vacation budget? There's not an answer. This, there's not an answer on this point, um, but I, I'm going to say that I don't, because it's especially because of the past year and stuff, and, and I don't see any problem with it or delay, just we've got to discuss exactly how we're going to go about it, but what you requested will probably be yeah. no problem. So I did send Kim the numbers, and, yep. uh, I can share that yeah, and it goes, it, it would still leave about 65000 unused at the end of the year in that uh, salary line. Right. And again, I know because of COVID and stuff, but I'm just going to stress that I want all you guys to take a vacation oh, soon, so you get rested. And, so, all right. Thank you. Well, thank, thank you, John. Have a good night. All right. See you next time. Um, if you want, or you can hear the fire. That was in heaven. Oh, fire. Fire. No, they did the, No, but I want to see uh, uh, what they have to say. And also, you got anything else? No, no. Okay. I want to see what you have to say about if there's any more about the fire but update for the alarm. Oh, no. over here, yeah. Come on. What's going on? <laughs> system 
eight times. <laughs> okay. I called the office, called the receptionist, talked to the guy's manager. Um, they're not interested. Who was that company? Uh, That's the current alarm system, right? Right. RD Allen. Yep. Do we have like a contract with a now service contract or? So no. Yeah. And, and that's part of the issue that we're in. Uh, the batteries haven't been replaced since 2003. Um, okay. you know, the, the alarm right now is clicking every five seconds. We have no idea whether it's actually serviceable or not. Um, so, replace the batteries. And then last week, on Thursday or Friday, um, Chief Yurascovich sent Caroline and I, and I a message and said, you know, help, it's going to be, 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 be every five seconds. This is town hall. This is town hall. No. No. Right. Um, so I went back to Burns and said, need something in writing from you on if we do both. And he sent me an email that I'll forward to the board and said, it will be at least $1,000 less if the town chooses to do the fire alarm system with both, to both the town hall and the fire department. He also reduced the cost of the fire alarm at the fire station already. So it was previously 13, seven, um, and he was going to run for He went down to 12 and some change. You have it in front of you there. So I'm sorry, 13, 360, 388. Um, and that's you know, an additional $1,000 spread over the two should we move forward on both systems. He is the provider currently at the grade school. So the next part is, is that all town buildings, town hall, fire station, and the grade school were all covered by the same provider and was very responsive. I sent him an email yesterday. He went back to me today. Mm -hmm. Asked him for a quote. He was on vacation the Friday that the system broke. Monday morning he was here to get us a quote. To me, you compare that with our Allen, and you know, for two weeks later, they still haven't given us a, a proposal. After I spent two hours walking you through both buildings, mm -hmm. there's a big difference there. Um, They're probably not going to call them either. Uh, and that, that's kind of where I'm at is, is if they won't come when you know we're calling to, to make a relatively large purchase for the town, what are they going to do when we say, hey, we need this little thing fixed? Because we've had issues at the grade school where the panel is activate. We always have a callback number and they very quick to respond to that. So yes. I'm sure they need to do the same thing in the other end also. They are yeah. over? Yes. Yeah, yeah, they're on Central Island. Yeah, it, it, there's companies down out of out of Massachusetts. I purposely tried to go with four local companies. So Packwork is out of Summersworth, Burns is out of Dover. Um, CEPO Securities, New Hampshire office is out of Portsmouth, and R.D. Allen is out of Hampton. So you can go down out of Boston, the further they're away, the less likely they are to actually respond to our needs. I think it makes sense in something like this to, to be mm -hmm. agreed. It probably would be more expensive to run. Yes. Yeah. And we know that Burns is a friendly company. There's all what line item is this coming? This isn't capital. capital item, is it? So for the fire department, it is a one-hour quota got approved for $25,000. And the Burns piece is part of that. Um, the town hall is not much of it. Yeah, we got to, I mean, we can okay this. When can they start um, the work on the town hall? 
he said fairly quickly, I didn't get an exact date because I didn't know what you guys were going to yeah. He knows that the system's not working, so the priority would be here, and then you would do the fire station um, afterwards. For the fire station, you have to get up in the attic, and the attic is uninstallated. That's probably an hour. So, later in September. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Burns also provided a quote for access at the fire station. Um, that quote was six thousand nine hundred thirty-nine dollars. That's for two door access controls, a new mirror, numerical and card reader, fifty cards, and the control unit that actually allows for access. Um, at the request of the select board last week. I broke down the cost to the town. So direct costs from Ubiquity um, are two starter bundles. It's the access control hub, the readers, the cards, etc. The switch to run it all. Um, basically, network run is the cable to do that. The cost direct to the town would be $2,459. First three line items are direct from the manufacturer and the not to me. Unfortunately, they're over five hundred dollars, mm -hmm. so I would purchase them on my own private credit card, and then the town would reimburse me for that. Mm -hmm. I would, you know, my proposal would be I would provide the direct receipts to the town, so that you can see exactly what I paid. There'll be town assets at the end of the day, um, and then. Most of the other stuff can be purchased through either Amazon or Home Depot. You know, network cable you can get at Home Depot. Amazon for the, the ends of the Cat 5 cable, they're called Keystone Jacks. They're for a 25 pack, it's $30 from Amazon. At Home Depot, they're $6.50 a piece. Mm -hmm. yeah, I would buy it through Amazon because that's cheaper for the town and it saves them money. Um, I have 25 years of IT experience. That's what I do for my day job. Um, the company that I work for does not directly compete with this, so that's the only reason that I'm able to, to do the work for the fire department is because it's not something we directly sell. It's not something that is competitive in nature. And when I got hired for the job, I have a, an agreement that I can continue to work for the fire department and do stuff. Um, the company I work for hires me out, my rate is $250 a month, is what they charge me. So I'm not looking to charge the town that, I'm just looking for you know, something for the time that it would take me to do this. Um, the advantage of us doing it versus having a, an external company do it is, is we can also put cameras around the fire station. Um, each camera is $449, again, that's not my cost, that's direct from the manufacturer. The NVR, which is the video recording system, is $499, and then you buy the hard drives, the each hard drive is $180. Again, not my cost, those are all costs from, from the manufacturer. And then each camera has a network run to it. All the cameras are run all over power over the internet, so they're powered by the equipment that's in our network. Everything stays on site. You can keep it for you know, as many days as the police department or the town decide you want to keep it. Um, but very easy, 16 to 90 days. Um, and again, town going equipment, it would be built. Um, you know, I'm happy to put on my card. Once it's installed and the chief signs off and suggests it's up and working, um, I'm more than happy to show the select board how it works. Um, I was explaining to the the officer Hancock, or Sergeant Hancock, earlier that they would actually be able to pull the cameras up in their old data terminals with an account logged in so they would be able to see what's going on outside of the fire department. They'd be able to have access and control all of those things. Um, so it, it's up to the town. If you guys would like me to do it, I'm happy. If not, for just access control, there is that you could move forward with, with burns. At that six thousand nine hundred and thirty-five dollars. Um, did you put together your proposal, Sean? 
Well, let me ask you, so the access is separate from this, right, Charlie? Yes. Access is not included in all Well, it, so it is part of the firm's contract. Oh, okay. um, it, you look on the second page that I um, mm -hmm. provided to you, mm -hmm. um, you will see it starts talking about card access, apparatus for and more, capital apparatus for south. Um, it continues on the third page. So you can just, you know, decide not to do that portion of that. Um, and just include uh, 13363. And that's just for the town. So that's for the fire station, and then the town hall is the 21 and 113. Um, is, is, well, I, I guess my question is, um, do we have to Will we still get the same pricing if we take the access out of this contract? So the, the negotiated prices that I've got for the town are just doing the fire alarm system. Okay. Location. Okay, great. Okay. So then we can move forward with this part and then look at your proposal separately um, and kind of look at it as compared to Burroughs. Yep. Okay, great. Um, so we're making a motion to move forward with not the total of 36082.88, yes? With the fire department put here. Okay. Uh, so we have a motion to move forward um, to accept a, um, a purchase order for $36,082.88. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you. Sean, I want to just say thanks for all the hard work you've put into this. I know it's a, a lot of research. You're probably doing a lot of stuff. I think you're going to be able to leave for probably a lot of what you're doing to the service of the town. So thank you. I would say probably on Which is why I'm anticipating they're going to have some questions. So if you could talk about why you're going with a four-inch meter rather than a two-inch well, meter. Well, I kind of reassessed the whole thing when we got to that point, just because of that base rate was so exorbitant. Um, basically, what we needed to do was coming into the fire station. We don't even know where the line comes in. It hasn't been filed. They've been trying to find it for years, and they haven't been able to do it. So it's a two-inch line which runs into the fire station. You know, we have to fill equipment at the station. A two-inch line could take anywhere from 30 minutes to more to fill apart because the line is just so small. And when we get done and we get back and we're cleaned up, we have to, I have to leave people around the clock for time. really shouldn't have to do it. So we were going to go for a double line to a four inch. So we could fill all that time in that. Multiple reasons. One, we're filling our own equipment. But two, we we're also going to have an outside connection so that if we needed to use the fire station as a supply source or they needed to use it instead of a hydrant, we are going to use that to supply the water. That would be another option for future companies that were in town for whatever reason. So those are the two main reasons why we were looking to increase it. As I sat and looked at the numbers for the base rate, it just kind of didn't make a lot of sense to that point. What was the base rate increase? Yeah, it, was, it was enormous. 
Um, yeah, yes. he gave it a percentage or something. I don't have a number in front of me, Carolyn, but from the two inch to the four inch, uh, it was to the point where it did not make a lot of sense to do it. Just for the cost, for the overall amount of time. What we wanted to do was it, it was a cautionary thing for the future if we ever needed it. It will come, it would be a time when that would be useful. Is it going to be used on a regular steady basis? No, it's not. It may not be used for five years. So looking back at that and looking at all the numbers, like why are we going to pay all this base rate for something that's just it's a potential? And I started thinking it's better if we would take some of the funding that's flowing this way and take it and we discussed this before about putting dry hydrants at either end of down at the boat launch and up at the upper end of the uh, the other boat launch above where the hydro plant sits. That would make more sense to me to have those two situations where we could get a water plant rather than taking it which we could build for it out of the fire station. So that's where I was thinking around switching some of that stuff. That so, so are you now proposing to go with just a standard, um, not even the two inch, or are you going to downgrade to the two inch? I'm trying to figure out what we're going to budget for now. No, it's to stay the two inch. Stay at the two inch. Yeah. You say stay at the two inch, but you don't currently have a water meter. No, so, you don't, you don't so j better. just just for clarification, they're going from what the residential rate was for um, the year. It was budgeted at five hundred thirty-nine dollars the, for the entire year, with the four-inch meter, not not including water usage, but just the base rate was fourteen thousand six hundred dollars for the entire year. So, when you add actually using water on top of that, that would be considerably more than that. So. Um, I'll, I'll flag that and go back and So just looking, just looking at those numbers just made zero sense to me. So there's a better way to utilize that by redirecting it at a possible sources that were never going to run out of water to river. So we could use that as an alternate instead of having to use the power station. You said two, what were the two alternates? One down at the boat ramp, down yeah. by the Legion, yeah. and the other one up at the upper end by the hydro plant. The dirt road that leads up the scout lane, yep. one out there. Okay. We have one on either end. So, since that is addressed in the hazard mitigation plan, identified as a deficiency in the case of certain emergencies, um, I'm wondering if you are aware of any funding sources, or else maybe we can apply for funding, noting that they are on the hazard mitigation. That's, that's one reason we do the hazard mitigation plan is to identify things that we should be working on and that can potentially help us with funding. So um, I'm wondering if you even have a ballpark for how much these would cost. I've been looking into that with George and we've been finding some numbers but they're not, they're not really substantiated yet to where I can come in and this is what I got a quote from this particular uh, company. I uh, haven't gotten it quite that far yet. Um, I've been talking to some other chiefs in the area that utilize cisterns with the tanks in the ground for their water supply and um, talking with them for people that maintain those for them but because they also install the, basically it's called the dry hydrant. And when we would leave, what we would do is we put the fire in the to draw water out of the river. <coughs> Even in the winter time, of course, we can do that. So, um, again, adding up all those totals, I know that putting in two dry hydrants is not, not going to cost as much as we talked about just the base rate. And this is all about getting water. It's the source point for getting water. Not only do we have to pay that large amount you said for base rate, if we use it, if we get a large fire in town, I get tank trucks going through there, and we use 50,000 gallons of water, I didn't want to see what the price tag on that is. Because that's what we could do very easily with some buildings in this town. So, did some thinking, reallocated, and said, well, we go to the river, we ain't paying for that water. So we can use that. So that's my thought process on that one. Doesn't make sense to invest all that money on something that I don't have it. You know, it all ties into ISO ratings and all that stuff, and insurance ratings at everybody's home. All these things trickle down. So I was again looking at that, going, the most cost-effective way for the community is to go to the river. And I don't disagree with you. The only concern I have about that is if there's any state or federal mandates about anything like that. About drawing from the river? Yeah, and having a dry island down there, we have to get. 
approval from the state. Of You're absolutely going to need so. an engineer to help us design it and apply for um, permitting through the process. Right. Yeah. 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 I know I have to plumb many stages of that, but that's also something. Well, yeah, so, so there's the installation cost, but then it, you know engineering and permitting comes out of that. Yep. When we put that as part of the hazardous or hazard mitigation plan, we identified it, all of those permitting and EPA and all of that stuff. Because it's not just the installation, it's every kind of fire truck uses it, the runoff that that creates, all of that. I mean, you know, water, it's, it's an issue, but it's not something that we can you know, not achieve. Get done. There's an awful lot of community that we say that. And I know we talked about it, I'm going to say six months or a year ago, we discussed it too. Yeah. So, again, with the water issue and the cost of it and what's happening, mm -hmm. uh, it didn't make sense for me to pay that day for the company. Do you want to go into average a year? For what? Water? Nobody does because they don't have a year at all. <laughs> and that's part of what's precipitating all this. There's nothing in the fire station that tells me what we're doing. Whether it be just a big, big use of the facility for bathrooms and washing dishes, <coughs> or if we're using it for filling fire trucks, we don't have a thing. Hasn't been a meeting in there forever. The scarier part is, is that they don't know where the shutoff is. Yeah, that's the only thing. So if there was a failure of a plumbing system in the fire truck, there's no way that we could try to do some sort of emergency digging it up. Uh, Ray McNeil's got a plan to find it finally. Sure. Uh, what about putting cameras down pipes and whatnot? And uh, the city to get that done. So it's in the works. And we've been talking about that for quite a long time. And so I said, it is a failure anyway. We just, water's running. So sometimes they find out where to shut it off. So we don't even know where it is. And this is from way back when they redid Main Street. The state put the new overpass in and redid Main Street probably 25 years ago. Huh. From that point on, and somewhere in that construction phase is when this got moved from one side to another, but nobody knows. They got an idea, but they cannot print it. That's another thing that works. All right. Thank you. You guys got anything else you want to address? No. Yeah, but the thing is, I'm glad you took the steps to get the fire alarm done because I, I can't guarantee you that this building is protected right now. No, you, and we, we took you. We took you guys there to me and you guys brought that up. I mean, it looks good. There's a green light that's beeping, but that doesn't mean anything. Right. It could not be doing the dialer, so I mean, you get a fire here tonight up on the third floor, nobody sees it till the, till the building, until the fire was a day away ahead of what we're going we're gonna to be able to take care of. So. Thank you. so that's the best thing to do. It. And again, we talked to Burns. I know that in a week or so they're going to be have a plan. They're going to be. That was my question. We'll probably have one in a week or two. I would yeah, certainly think so. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So, so I'll come back. Um, taking our model, we'll have approval. There's a contract you're going to make that design. So I don't know who wants to sign. Okay. Sorry, Sean, you say you're going to make an appeal or you won't have one yet? You actually had an appeal. I had an appeal in here for, uh, I had two of them that we had discussed last week and then you wanted to leave and we were going to have. Burns do the fire station one and then also have Sean do his portion of it. I do have one here for the fire station, if you want like that. Uh, I have a deal written up to 13,700 which was the price that we had a week ago. Since then, that's been reduced by $300. That was a new proposal that Sean gave Yeah, there's no reason why we can't not sign that. Which one was that for? This is the fire line thing with the fire house. But it almost like you could have a second time in that for town hall. Oh, and then put it on the actual. So if it's there, if you want to do that, you have to yeah. have enough for that. It's helpful to have. I think that's settled. It's actually not. I'm going to, um, if you could, could you add the line for the, because I'm. Um, add the line for the town hall? Yeah, if you would. I can certainly do that. Um, and just separate the funding source to the um, town hall repairs maintenance. I just want to do a second cash. It could be either one. Yeah, I'll sign it. Oh, they have one, right? You have a copy, so if you can sign that. I wrote out a whole line, too. I think that was. Yeah. Oh, all right. I can copy that. Yeah, I wrote it.
I would just stop. But it acts through the, the, the um, access system on the H2. Okay. And just circle the uh, So when do you think we'll mm -hmm. see yours? I have it all already for you. Yeah, like is that it? Well, all the numbers that I've given you will graph off okay. websites. I have cost breakdown, like all of the yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's the, uh, it's the same card level. Mm, so two pages. Uh, yeah, it's two pages. Yeah, we'll do. Do you want to do that and then we figure out what we can do for the rest yep. of the year? Yep. Okay. We'll do that and then while Caroline's up, we'll have a little bit of a thing. Do you have anything to do with the administrative agency to transition or is that the email? Do you have anything else to add to that thing? It's the transition yeah. conversation. I'd, I'd love to talk about that as much as the board wants to talk about okay. that. We can start with budget and then. Perfect. I, I can give it to you to scan back to me, or else I can scan it to you in the send morning. Me a copy. Okay. I will contact you in the morning. Thank you. Thank you. You didn't actually move the purchase order because he adjusted it. So okay. Um, yeah. Okay. So I thought it would be okay if we were going to do it the last time. All we need is in place. 
Mm -hmm. Those of you Jewish meet the Sure. Yeah. He'll be able to adjust it as to whichever way you need to. Okay. Thank you. So we have a motion to um, accept this PO. So this is for uh, motion to accept PO 2015 uh, for the fire station alarm system and town hall fire alarm replacement um, for a total of $34,481.76. Okay. That's the right. Yep, and I'll touch on that second. All the numbers we had today. Okay. Um, do you want to second that? Yep, I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Just one more thing before I disappear. You got it. You would ask me a couple of times, and I don't think I addressed it in the early parts of the budget process, but the line item has to do with fire station repairs. It's at the 95 right now, and we're looking to keep that level kind of at the same time. And you asked me about projects we were looking to do, mm -hmm. got a whole list of those, so uh, we'll work within that number to accomplish as many of those as we can. Thank you. We're looking for any increases now, but we've moved it up a little bit the last few years to uh, accomplish the lot we still get more. Thanks, Mark. I got to say, the fire station has come quite a bit in the last couple of years. We've done a lot, but it needed it because nothing was done for so long. It kept getting pushed back, pushed back, pushed back. And basically, when we get through all this stuff done, whether it's budget process or over, I want to invite you two guys and we're going to take the other seat. One evening, I want you to come to the fire station. Pre-meeting or during meeting or however. And as I said before, I want to bring the York ambulance over so you can see and witness what the ambulance is supposed to be. You can see what the improvements are we've made to the fire station, what we still have ongoing, the new air building station just to get you a feel for what the inside of the firehouse is like. And see, when I've seen you in there one time, Kim, when we were going over something else mm -hmm. in, my 30, in yes. my 30 years there. So in my opinion, I think it be, you were there that night. Okay. You stayed a long time. You've been in and out. We were both but, on the budget crate. Yeah. But I just think it would be something that you understood and saw what in there visually. So we come in and we're trying to educate you and ask for stuff that you have a better understanding of what we've got going on. I mean, it's been very supportive. We've done a lot of improvements in the last bunch of years, but it's like you have you, know, you guys in there seen a little bit more. Caroline's been in there a lot the last few years, so I'm just saying it's something you guys help manage with the help of us. And it makes sense for you to be a little more updated on what's in there. And it, it, the, the other thing I'll say is hopefully we won't have to use it in time in the near future, but if there, is, if there ever was a like, item that came up the coast and saying this, then we got to secure building and elbow we can go to and feel safe. And, and that's a lot of what we're working towards again. We can do one of the last proposals and it's included this was to get the doors so that they were all taken care of and that can fire like handicap access. Because that building is it and we talked about upgrading the uh, generator out back for that reason. And yeah, I it was one. We were I was involved in you know, one of my other positions that I now have as emergency management director involved in all those pre calls. I probably put ten to twelve hours in listening to all the weather reports, dealing with the state because they opened up their emergency management system. So when that happens, every director has to get called in, logged in, and stay informed of all that stuff. So I get usually 12 hours into that. And luckily it went the other way. Yeah. You know, and that's what you are <laughs> we could. We didn't have what's happening in Louisiana now, but that doesn't mean we can't. So one important factor with that is making a secure, sound shelter. And that's what the fire station is doing. So we're working for that. Okay. except in um, under-executive for the bookkeeper administrative staff, 
to bring that position up to $21 an hour at the current hours, um, that's a difference of $2,800. That, that's a highly underpaid um, position for market rate of what other finance people in municipalities make. Um, like other people have said, we're not just competing. We, we like to talk about Rollinsford being a small town and we can't compete with Dover. Um, Rollinsford is really unique where we're a small town, but we're also in Stratford County, which is a really high um, cost of living place to live relative to other places in the state. So um, it, it's a combination of both factors when you're trying to both attract and retain staff that we're working um, as, as a small community, which is challenging to fund these things appropriately, but at the same time with our geography and police officers and everybody in the area being understaffed, for example, with police officers, if you're competing with those larger communities. So it's not any different for administration. So I've, I'm sorry. I've, do you read French? No. No, there's oh, not. Wait, because it's all over the place. Okay. So, so there's not a particular one, and you're welcome to. No, that's okay. So, along so, with you're so, so you do have this, by the way, in the drive, the right. whole thing. So you're proposing increase in Chuck's salary from what to what? In his hourly rate, it's eighteen something yeah. to twenty one. Okay. There are. Um, that affects payroll taxes. I did not make any adjustment to um, my salary or anything else in administration, though just to note that um, my position, like other positions, you and I um, talked about that, Paul, the other night, that my position in the mar market rate for my position as an administrator is probably 85 to 90 in this area. Um, more if you went to a manager, so so there is a difference with those positions. But just to give you, you know, a, a perspective about what what to think about as you choose to, to put something in that line for next year. I, I cut the professional services line by seven thousand dollars, assuming that you do some of the projects this year that, that were um, budgeted for that line, such as the um, surveying of the transfer station and, and with the many facets of that project, um, legal expenses, which I've started to outline for you, um, that will take care of a lot of that line, but still I think you can save a good bit for next year. Contingency, I'm suggesting um, go back to 1% of the previous year's operating budget, so that's an increase of not quite $2,000. That, that's up to you with how you feel about available budget dollars at any particular time and whether or not that needs to increase. Um, it, it's kind of um, it's kind of prudent to have the money there just in case you need it because like like others were saying, we could get an item um, or, or some other catastrophic event and there's no way to really plan for that and that's what contingency is for. So um, I'm hoping that you'll address wages, though I haven't budgeted for any of them specifically. Minute takers should be at le least $16 an hour more for the specialized position for this board and the land use administrative assistant, I would suggest 18 really, but 16 minimally for the newer people in the less specialized positions. Can we get a breakdown of the minute takers and the current rates? Sure. Hmm. the right time to know. Technology. There, there's a lot to say about technology. Um, Tom LaBelle has sent um, his own proposal and assessment, not so much um, attached to budget planning, but just as a general narrative around planning for technology. I'm not planning for any computer purchases next year, but the following year, I, I'm suggesting that we start replacing one machine up here per year until they've all been replaced. The bigger issue is that um, Google is not serving us really well. It doesn't um, talk to the website very well. You, For example, you could put um, stormwater in the search bar for the website and get a folder, lots of folders around stormwater, um, but you couldn't put in the search bar, for example, what is our um, 
what is our stormwater management plan and, and have that come up because that's in a subfolder within Google. Um, Google is, is structured such that people own documents that, and, and that doesn't make sense because documents should be centrally located and then the right people have access and different levels of permissions around um, those documents. So we don't have, while we have central file storage, we don't really have central file access in the same way. We have probably four or five different planning folders because different board members create their own planning folders and other people provide them for their own purposes. And then it's extremely cumbersome to try to um, rearrange that and undo it and recreate it. So, so there, there are a few things that way with Google. Um, and then we end up buying a Microsoft subscription on top of that because while Google comes with Google Docs and Google Sheets and those other Google apps, nobody wants to use them. So it's a separate um, fee, whereas we could be going with Microsoft Office. So my suggestion there is that you get a committee of qualified residents um, together to evaluate options for changing file storage and email servers and the whole thing. Um, and, and eventually, you know, also wrapping up bringing the website management into town administration too. So, so kind of, we're kind of hobbling along with technology, not so much in the actual hardware, but more in the administrative aspect of how that's operating right now. Primex sent our, our risk management um, company <coughs> sent a survey of, to, to all the cities and towns they service in the state of New Hampshire around certain security protocols, um, sort of self-recognizing our deficiencies, but also for them. And um, you probably saw that Peterborough got cyber hacked for $2.5 million. Um, it's not the first time that's happened. It's not recoverable. Um, it's easy to do, um, and, and so we're not doing enough to safeguard ourselves through policies, software, um, mandatory trainings, and things like that to guide against technology. So that's just a note which is not included in, you know, it's not budgetary at this point except to um, recognize that depending on whether, you know, how quickly and whether you choose to get a subcommittee going, it can inform that, but the police department recently had a problem with their email server and they switched. So um, I, I would suggest that you talk to Tia Pass and Sean Glidden who manage, um, Tia manages the website, but also she works with Sean and, and they're very familiar with this, pro, um, this situation and, and they're pushing for um, help with change. There's going to be a cost to that transition which if you um, budget for an outside agency to handle it um, is, is approximately $8,000. They would be willing to help um, and, and work on it instead. That's up to the board except to say there are there's a lot of personal information and it's going to be tricky to manage permissions around documents to make sure that things that are public stay public and things that are only shared between two people, that like all those permissions are maintained as we work on a new file structure, but um, for are example... Are maintained in the file structure now, in, in our um, file storage, are, are private documents protected? Well, they're protected in that I create a document and only I can see it unless I choose to share it with you and then only we can see it. Okay. But if you transfer to a different provider like mm -hmm. Microsoft, how do you know when you have thousands of files that you're protecting all those same permissions? That, that's the concern with that. Well, have we ever explored, I guess this isn't a fair question for you, but setting up a couple drives, so we actually have a stored drive, like an S drive or something that we can actually save. Well, and, and that's something I would suggest that you <laughs> so, throw to the committee to consider, because there are definitely advantages and disadvantages to that. But for example, when I, when I leave my position, I have to assign all of my Google documents to one other person which doesn't make sense because those documents will still be shared with the same people, right. but who gets to control those documents and continue to share them now belong to something completely different. Mm -hmm. And given how small we are, mm -hmm. that's, there's not, it's not always appropriate and it complicates the file structure because now all of my files are within somebody else's files. 
Yeah. It's hard to see the file structure in there. I don't know how it's configured, but like yeah. I don't see a file structure. Like the people just drop things in there. <laughs> Um, well, and that's also because some people have different comfort levels with um, using computers anyway, so they don't necessarily create folders, and they just create documents. You know, like some people have a desktop that looks like that, with tons of clutter, and other people have neat folders. Mm -hmm. So I think it's also a function of that. Um, yes. Um, so moving on to benefits, just quickly. Um, Benefits is something that I would hope that the board would continue to review as you're talking about um, employee attraction and retention. Um, it's the only community I'm aware of that does not offer dental. Um, and it's been on the agenda and discussed for years. And, and it cannot be offered until the town, or, or, or employees <coughs> cannot benefit from it until um, the town proposes um, a cost sharing or, or a, you know, a cost to the employee that will get 75% or more of the eligible employees to sign on to that. So um, I would encourage you to review that and, and reconsider how you might offer dental effectively. Professional development is the other thing that is important for employees and not really something that's budgeted at all except for police. And, and for police, it's, it's a liability, and that makes sense on a different level. But there's something to be said in, in investing in your employees and helping them improve and do their jobs better, and, and also to um, cross-train them so there isn't just one person who performs a certain function. So evaluating that and budgeting for it. Um, the facilities director, I've also briefly discussed um, I have included it in the spreadsheet at the current rate. The 2021 amount was um, prorated for July through December. I've put the same amount in there again, but for a full budget year. Um, I had a conversation with the, um, the janitor who does the cleaning in this building, um, noting that we have weeds growing now in the seam of the roof outside. Um, and, and there are still boards, there are boards and there's a shingle um, on that back roof there over the police department um, and the gutters are full. Um, and, and you're hearing about the fire alarm, um, who, you know, nobody thought to change a battery in 18 years. So it would be helpful if somebody were responsible for, knew how to do that, did a good job with it and, and was responsible for it because we've been um, relying on department heads um, who have other professional functions and that has not been serving the buildings really well um, toward now. Strategic governance is something that we haven't talked about in a good long time, but I left that in there from last year with a website to a specific company, and I'm not advocating necessarily that you go with this specific company, but I think there's a lot to be learned in hearing from this company or another around the idea of strategic governance, whereby in budgeting, we're not just asking for, um, for more money because we've spent a lot of money this year in that line, so we'll likely need to spend more, you know, the same amount this, this time, but instead, what are the problems we're hearing from the community? What are the expected, you know, how do we spend money to specifically address those problems and, and what are the outcomes and, and doing that in a database way and how do you collect that data and present that so that the resident can see that their budget went toward these things that address these complaints and now here you know so speeding um, speeding's a big complaint so we we do, we allocated x number of dollars in a certain way, whether it be for officers or speed signs or what have you, and then here's the outcome. So that you can actually um, kind of track with um, the residents the outcome for the budget dollars that you're requesting for them. So it's a way to help the department heads and the select board think about budgeting more strategically. Um, that, again, is not included in here. I think that's listed in year two. Planning and zoning, um, we're doing pretty, those boards are both really busy. I've level funded them in their new structure. 
those are going well. Um, Stormwater and nitrogen. I do not have a dollar recommendation for this except to say that I think it's really important that this really technical permit rests in an employee's hands for the responsibility of making sure that the regular calendar items that we're responsible for and the major projects come before the board if, if that's appropriate, like with these vehicle wash stations. Like who, who's to remember that those things have deadlines that we're responsible for and planning ahead to make sure that we know how much they're going to cost, they're budgeted for, and that they're on the select board's radar with here's the purchase order to accomplish that, and then who's filling out the annual permit and all those things. So stormwater and nitrogen are tied. They're both highly technical. There are an extraordinary number of resources and meetings around understanding them and best approaches toward them, and they're evolving all the time. So I think that's... Um, too much to ask of a volunteer. We were very um, fortunate to benefit from having um, an engineer who was a resident who managed um, those calendar items and some of those things for us. I don't think it's realistic or responsible to assume that we can find such a person again for um, that level of responsibility. Um, welfare, I've left level funded. Um, we're managing really well with that. I would say that has to do mostly with federal funding of local agencies or who are helping our residents before they um, need to come to us. So that's really helpful. The master plan was something that was proposed for the warrant last year. It was taken off the warrant um, due to feedback from the public at the town budget public hearing. The master plan is a document we are required to update at least once every 10 years. Uh, it is now very overdue. The last approved one we have is um, 2005. We have draft chapters that we can't show were ever approved, but, but the idea of the master plan is exactly that. It's um, an integrated process with the community to ask them, what are the areas of town you really want to preserve? And, and where <coughs> there is development, because it's inevitable, where do you want to see that so that you can target your efforts? And when you want to reconsider a zoning change so that you can make um, industrial development happen in a place where commercial industrial development wants to happen, but where we're also willing to have it. Um, it it's, it's not prudent to, for the planning board um, or, or the town to undertake those major decisions without engaging with the public. So the ZBA faced um, a major case of um, a 96 unit apartment complex um, that failed, but they they reference the idea that we don't know if the public wants this. We don't know if this makes sense or not. The master plan is what they would reference in those deliberations to decide, uh, yes, this is congruent with we want more residential development and we want it over here, or else it's really not. So it's supposed to be a guiding document that all the boards and committees would reference that represents the community's values about what they want Rollinsford to be with the, over the next 10 years. So I'm proposing to put that, that the board put that back on the warrant. It was proposed to be $20,000 over two years for a cost of $40,000 to have an outside entity come and facilitate those multiple conversations on our behalf with the public. There are different ways to do it. There are different agencies, um, private consultants versus draft regional planning who will um, offer different varieties of apples and oranges for you to consider and how you do that, but I think it's important to put funding on it and start getting compliance so that the town can benefit from that resource. Um, also, um, a proposal from this past year, um, digitizing our documents. In the move of offices in this, in this building um, to socially distance our staff and make better use of space. We moved 
all of our already disorganized planning and zoning documents um, upstairs. Uh, most of them are upstairs now. They're essentially thrown in boxes. They're in rolls piled on top of each other. And they're not to be found. We have information that we can't reference, and that's not serving us well. So when a company goes to the planning board and says, I want to have this auto repair garage, and, and, the, and the planning board says yes, as long as you don't have any more than five vehicles out front, and you can't sell cars, and your operating hours are eight to five. Um, when we think that we're not they're not compliant three years later, we have no way of referencing, where is that site review? Are they compliant? Are they not? What are, are, what are, what's the right of way on Clement Road? We, don't, we cannot access our information, so we're not serving ourselves well, and we're not serving the community well. So as we evaluate technology and central file storage, digitization and a consistent nomenclature and um, a, an approach to um, particularly the planning and zoning documents because they are so voluminous um, would be my recommendation for a first approach with that. Ultimately, I would hope that the, um, that the town would move toward digitizing every process, but it's not, of course that would take time. So you would want to digitize documents at the same time that you are digitizing a process so that you're not digitizing and then falling behind again while you're continuing to create paper for that same function. Planning is really challenging um, with that regard because the full-size plan sets are really enormous. So it's prohibitively expensive to rent one of those scanners. Stratford Regional Planning has um, just purchased one for um, communities to share. So I think there's hope with that, that if you, um, I, I would still suggest that you go with an outside agency to get lots of volume accomplished, but you can also, in the meantime, um, work on some of it yourselves uh, with employees as a way to take sort of a double-pronged approach with it. Um, because in that way, doing large chunks of documents at once is going to be enormously expensive. We have a quote that is referenced by Link in my narrative for um, tens of thousands of dollars for all of our documents. Um, planning and zoning is the most um, voluminous, but at the same time, it's the least impactful as, as far as digital process goes. On the other hand, you know, building permits, for example, is not a lot of volume of documents, but it's very impactful as far as a digital process goes because more people have their hands in, you know, a building permit process. So, um, if you understand what I'm saying, like, you, you know, we've got process and we've got storage. Um, and, and the most important thing about digitization would be making sure that you have a consistent nomenclature. So while you're working with an outside agency around how do we name these documents so that we can find what we're looking for, at the same time, employees are all clear about this is the format that you, fi that you save a file as. You always name it this way so that you can find, you can consistently find them after they're digitized. So I'm recommending that you go back to um, the idea of digitizing documents. Any amount of money that you feel as though you can put toward that um, is put to good use. As I said, it's tens of thousands of dollars, so I wouldn't suggest that you would accomplish it all in one go around. But um, that last quote is available on the drive. It's about three years old, so we would know that prices have gone up since then, but it'll give you a ballpark of the categories of information we're storing and the relative costs for each of those. Um, the reason that that quote is so expensive is because they have two people digitizing every document um, in that process um, as, a, as a point of having like quality control really is what it is mm -hmm. to make sure that you're not missing documents, that you're naming them correctly and all those things. So there are certainly less expensive options out there depending on how comfortable you feel with um, their process and, and their approach to it. The last page is the, um, is the breakdown of year one, year two. I won't go into um, those other years um, 
you, you can look into that. This is also on the drive, which I've asked um, Tia to have available on the website so that the public can look at all of the budget proposals and review all of them there. So that should happen shortly. Um, the other thing that I want to just make really clear to the board in your budget planning as you're rearranging um, staff or doing whatever you will do with administrative staff is that um, 2022 is our revaluation year. So Avatar will be here going over every single property and evaluating its value, bringing everything up, up to market rate. Currently, properties are um, assessed at between 60 and 65 percent of what we know market rate to be. Um, and that's only okay because we're all equally under-assessed. Um, we are required by the Department of Revenue to um, reassess properties at least every five years. Along with that, though, is that we are also required by the Department of Revenue to do an internal audit of all of our veteran credits and elderly exemptions. Veteran credits are, are pretty straightforward and simple. People just need to affirm that they still live there because we've already seen their DD-214, um, and that's really the only other qualifications. Elderly exemptions are really complicated because um, it's, it's essentially like a welfare application, the way you are evaluating all their income and, your, um, and their assets, and you're looking at it critically to see, like bank statements. Um, if you see a transfer in, you, you, know, you notice that and say, could, it, could you show me the bank statements for where that money's coming from? Um, to make sure that you have the full financial picture of these applicants and you can verify that they still live in the home and they still meet the income and asset limits. Um, Avatar will be meeting with property owners who want to dispute their proposed new value. Ultimately, the select board approves all of the values. Um, there will be hearings for the people who don't understand or want to dispute those values. Um, <coughs> but it, it's very resource intense to do this audit. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. I spoke with Chad Roberge, our, our, audit, our assessor from Avatar, this last week about that process. They can, that's not part of their contract. They don't typically handle that for us they could, and you can talk to them about that. That's, you know, it's an option. It depends on how you want to handle that. Um, we did it internally on our own five years ago. Um, but then the board needs to sign off on understanding and agreeing with um, each of those um, elderly exemptions that the person meets the guidelines and still lives there and continues to qualify. So um, there's a lot there, and it's intense. So um, to the actual, so, so that's the narrative. To the spreadsheet, you all have a copy of um, the numbers that I have plugged in, which are mostly not any different. Um, as I said, I'm hoping the board will review salaries and apply those to those positions in administration of land use as you would any other department and bring them um, equally up to market rate. So my suggestion with that is if you're going to um, address a certain department and you know give them 10% raises because you know to bring them up to market rate, for example, um, I just you know it's a very small town and it's a very small community of employees and I would caution you against addressing it mostly in one department and then and then other people don't get raises. And I think you have something to write now. Um, because people see that, and, and they feel as though everybody else got a raise for the past three years, and I haven't gotten a raise yet. So um, just to be mindful of that in your approach to how you do raises. Um, I would note for you as we go through the budget that, um, Again, no raise does not mean that I wouldn't recommend a raise. I'm just leaving it to you as you set what you are deciding the COLA to be for next year. Under personnel administration, um, health insurance, life, disability, unemployment, all of those insurance rates come into us typically in early October. So um, soon, but not yet. So I've left those level funded, while at the same time we know health insurance will go down. So I, I could decrease 
health insurance but just by the amount of the one person the chief says that he's not proposing to hire for next year. But health insurance is currently 163000 So when the insurance company comes back and says, okay, that's going to be a 6% increase, by that time, you've already made your proposals to the budget committee, and now your budget is not in the bottom line that you might have hoped it would be. So I just want to bring that to your attention so that as you think you're, oh, looking at like a 2% overall for the operating budget um, because of all the proposals and where you're at with that, you're going to get thrown out a roller coaster with um, the health insurance, and, and that's how that goes. Um, utilities. I will adjust the water for the fire station according to what the chief has laid out, but I am proposing that um, you increase the sewer at <coughs> Town Hall, going up 255%. All the water, all the sewer is going up um, very significantly. So um, just to look out for those numbers, um, $539 for Town Hall going up to 2412 for the year, for example. Um, so those are all plugged in there, but with 3,000 3, gallons of water usage. So I don't know whether that reflects a reasonable amount of water for how much we use here. It's two units of water usage. Um, so we can evaluate that and adjust it if you wish, but there's a note there so you can see how I created that. So a really it may seem like a bizarre question, but so what has been happening with the fire department prior to them not having the, I mean, how are they getting charged for what they're not? Oh, they're getting charged for water. Um, they're getting charged on the flat residential rate that everybody else is, is getting. Okay. And, and, the and the water department has said <coughs> that's ending. Okay. We're installing a meter and it can be a two inch or a four inch, Got it. but that's ending. So. Um, I would anticipate we probably have one more quarter at that old rate, um, but it depends on whether or not they get to that construction before the ground freezes, or if they choose to wait until spring. So. So we can see it. We can expect to see a little bit of a cost increase here at the town, possibly, right here. At the town. Oh, there's definitely. There's and then the fire station could be a big increase, possibly. Um, Absolutely, I would okay. say. Just not as much as I originally said. It's not going from, you know, it's not going up to 14000 But I, I have to go back to, you were, You all were on that email thread back and forth with the water department about yes, I was. what is this going to look like. Um, so, it, you know, $2,400 up to, up from $500 is 347% is increase on the water at Town Hall on top of a 255% increase on the sewer at Town Hall. So wow. it's, it's, it's all over the place. Those are huge percentages. It's still, as far as commercial rates go, you know, it's, it's an adjustment and it's, it's big for us, but it's still only like a $2,400 budget line for the year. So um, it's not like the fire station, which I was thinking would be $14,000. Well, at least it's not that. Yeah, exactly. Um, I've decreased the electricity in the town hall by $5,000 to reflect current usage. We've had a couple of years now with like partial years um, since changing over to LEDs. So now that we've had a full year over in LEDs, um, I'm, I'm sure we can handle that reduction. Um, you are still... Um, the, the hydrant rental is also going up, so that's with the water um, department. I've increased municipal taxes. We pay taxes to um, to communities in Maine. Um, I've increased that by $100 just to reflect um, the expected ongoing increase in municipal taxes. Um, there's still one um, blank in, in government buildings now that the fire chief has let us know his intent there. We still need a number for transfer station for repairs and maintenance there. So um, we can be looking for and, and asking for that. Um, and, and that's really all I have. Like I said, I've, I've level funded um, welfare. Um, emergency, um, th there's, a, there's a category that um, nobody else addressed, so I'll just bring to your attention emergency management. Um, there are two FEMA lines, they're level funded. Those are for grant 
grants, should we receive them, that's where we put um, a lot of our COVID expenditures last year, just as a place to put them so that they weren't necessarily in a department if that wasn't appropriate. But those lines are only used if offset funds. So I would. Um, I spoke to the, the police chief and fire chief about that, and everybody's fine with level funding those. So um, that that's really all I have. There's, there's a lot in that narrative. You, you have it all on the drive. It's all reflected in the spreadsheet. I've updated the spreadsheet tonight to reflect recreation and building maintenance for the fire station. Um, I'll recalculate water for the fire department. Um, and we can continue to revise it as the board narrows things down. All right. Um, do you want to add anything to your? Um, I'm going to get your email. So, anything you want to add briefly about vacancy transition? Has anything happened? I think we should have a separate meeting for so, yeah. to go through okay. the list yeah, um, and kind of talk through some of the items and maybe get some recommendations from you. Um, I know we kind of commented a little bit, but. I think that could be a whole other discussion. Meeting, like, all right. Yeah, um, which we should maybe at least schedule tonight. Yeah. If we could. Uh -huh. Because your seventeenth is only about two and a half weeks away. Yeah. It, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then perhaps, um, perhaps you might even get us a little bit of information about the services of MRI, because I know you're kind of proposing. Um, I, I would encourage you to go to their website, and I and I put it in one of those emails to you, um, mrigov.com. Mm -hmm. They provide a variety of services. They do wage surveys if you want to know um, what a particular per, um, position makes, or if you want to have them evaluate all of our salaries and make recommendations. They do that. They are a temp agency for any high-level municipal function. So we did the interim police administrator. They do town administrators and managers fire chiefs, finance directors, um, whatever you need that hmm. way. They have experienced staff who are just ready to step in and take over for however long you want them in place. Okay. I guess I should so, I thought I just made the assumption they were more involved with just law enforcement, but obviously no. okay. so, so the person that we had from MRI Absolutely. was a law enforcement person, but they have finance people, they have TAs, okay. whatever you need. Hmm. So I think that if we schedule something that will give us time to look at as well as I've already kind of looked through and commented on the spreadsheet, but maybe give you a chance to look at it too, and we can focus on that and what we need to do to take steps forward. Okay, sounds good. So I think that would be a great plan. Um, I just I just want to reiterate that if the board has um, long term plans around adding additional responsibilities to individuals and rearranging not long term, yeah, that, sure, that we, they talk to them and engage with them about their availability and, and okay. willingness with all those things. Yeah, I think it's more of like a point of contact, you know, um, for someone to kind of collect the information, but not necessarily have complete ownership over it. So, um, so in terms of availability, so um, I think we're, we're going to meet next Monday, because we still have a lot of things on this agenda that we probably well, won't get Wednesday, to today. Right? So Wednesday. Wednesday. Right. Yeah. Well, we, we will, yeah, we're going to pretty much shelf everything else going forward pretty quick, but there's not a lot left so, on this right now. Thursday's available next week. I emailed the board that I'm not available on the 13th. You, you can certainly meet without me, but as far as going over this transition plan or, or whatever else you want to review with me, um, the 14th, 15th, and 16th, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of that week are completely free. So, so we have Wednesday and Thursday of next week and Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of, of the following. Can we first talk about the next select board meeting? So that would be Wednesday the 8th, right? Mm -hmm. that yes, I think that's what you all agreed on. Um, and do we want to keep that at 6.30, Paul, or do we want to move it up to 6 and try to get through, like make a little more progress? We'll give it 6. Okay. Okay. All right. We'll try to make more progress on the things we've been tabling. Okay. So that's... And then, so in terms of your availability after the 8th, um, what did you say? You so had so Friday so Thursday of that same week, Thursday mm -hmm. next week is open. Yep. 
and that leaves Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of the following week. Okay. Um, Paul, what's your feeling about, I mean, we can try to limit it to like an hour. Yeah, I'm and okay with Thursday. The night? The day after. Okay. And is that at 6 or 6.30? To be exact, let's do 6 if we can do it. Okay. It's just kind of crazy that it's September already. Yeah. What is this meeting? Select uh, board on the 8th and 9th, both starting at 6. Um, so it's a, a transition discussion? Transition discussion. On the 9th. Yeah. 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 Strictly. Great. Um, okay. There is one purchase order in the board folder you have there, Paul, um, if you would, for another 10 hour block of time for IT, if you would, um, if the board wanted to address that. I think you make a motion to uh, accept. Second. Oh, sorry, sorry. Oh, you want to ask me? PO number 2046 for uh, IT hardware, uh, 10 hours work, block service is $760. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Thank you. Uh -huh. So uh, just a point of clarification too. I saw the town mail. The CIP meeting is on the first, Wednesday the first. Not, it said um, Tuesday the first. Seven sixty. Yep. Mail it that went out. You want it? Did it change? Um, I'll look at that. I, I don't okay. know. Computer services. I hope not, but that could be. So I'll, I'll correct that. Okay. Um, and so our goal for the next um, select board meeting is to set. Um, to, so we're going to set a date for um, a special meeting to interview candidates, Paul? Yep. Okay. Um, and we're going to have uh, all our resume, we're going to have all the information yep. Yep. prior to that so we can read through it and be upset. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. If you're looking at the calendar, are you looking to set that now? No, nope. I think um, we'll see um, what we get for resumes and um, Assuming people want to move forward, we'll, we'll schedule that. Um, and if we can, you know, keep that as a targeted meeting as well. Agreed. Um, you know, just very specific. Yep. Instead of trying to lump it in with all this other stuff. Yep. Okay. But we don't have a date for that yet, right? Yes, we're going we're gonna to set that at the next meeting. Okay. okay. Um, so is there anything um, urgent in the remainder of the agenda that we can't table until the next meeting? There isn't, but I want to just bring up a couple small things real quick. Okay, thank you. Um, shit, I don't know what to do. Revised estimate revenue, we're all set with that. Um, you're not all set. It doesn't have to get addressed tonight, okay. but you yes, really need to address it soon. We need to report that to the state as part of the tax rate setting. Um, so. Okay. And so, Let's put that on. I commented on the, um, I don't know if you saw, I commented on things that I thought we could move, like, to the next meeting. Okay. Um, um, you know, that were kind of more important. Uh, Caroline's last comments. Revised estimate revenue, that'll be on the next meeting. So, parking ordinance, I think, can be moved to the next meeting. Yeah, I think we may know, I don't know, we'll talk about that. I think we both know we might be done with that. Um, and, and the, the water sewer district request for meeting, is that something they're still looking for from us? They are because they're trying to budget, so they need to know if they're going to do a project next year, do they need to think about that by taxation because the money won't be available, or depending on what the project is and how much money is it, would you be willing to give them ARPA funding for it? So that definitely should be next meeting as well. I, so I think policy could follow up to this, not the next meeting, but perhaps the following meeting. And this is some of the things I've recommended in my comments on the agenda, Paul, is okay. like next meeting and then the following meeting, like how can we organize this list a little bit better by priority. Right. And get ready for budget too. Yeah. And, yeah. and we do have to plan for um, some budget workshops. And yeah, and yeah. some people to take. Because the end of September you said? Is your first meeting with the budget committee okay. for, for highway. And so CIP is meeting on Wednesday. 
they're going to wrap up their recommendation and then spreadsheet and hand it off to you. So I anticipate that on um, the 8th, potentially, if you're willing to hear CIP, then they can present CIP to you on the 8th at the next meeting. I think so. I think the budget we should take, yeah. At the eighth meeting, we should plan our budget workshop sessions. Okay. Does that sound fair? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Workshop eight. Well, um, we'll uh, workshop eight tonight. Yep. Table the policy discussions um, for uh, two weeks, probably. Yeah, two right. weeks. That's what I recommend. Um, I would suggest that you group all the policies together yep. and then Agreed. review which among them. Okay. All right, so I'm just going to do a board member update quick. I really don't have anything except for I did meet with Rec on Thursday of last week. And so you presented that budget, um, and we'll talk about that going forward. Okay. Um, I think that's all I have right now. Um, and I did receive an email from Mike Gillis um, about some Highway Safety Committee issues. Um, is he still um, chairing that? Because he hasn't been in any of the discussions regarding Main Street recently. So he hasn't been to select board meetings. So he resigned, and then because Main Street popped up again as an issue. So, so he was on it earlier. Mm -hmm. I think he missed the one meeting, which was your first meeting on the Highway Safety Committee, and then he hasn't been to any of select board conversations about it. Um, but he's otherwise been a really consistent member. He was chairing that committee. Um, that committee should vote for a new chair, um, understanding that um, the ex officio should never be the chair of, of a committee. So it would make sense that um, they vote again to do that. Those are just hard copies of public comments that you received all okay. earlier. So um, there are a number of issues still outstanding on the Highway Safety Committee because they've been occupied with the Main Street um, conversation, but there's still handicapped parking on Front Street and the bushes on the corner of Church Street and Main Street that um, are outstanding from last year. Okay. Well, we should be sure to invite him, make sure he's aware of um, the parking ordinance discussion at the next meeting. Okay. He may have some, something to weigh into before we uh, make a recommendation on that. That's all I have. All right. Um, so, Carolyn, let me put on to you. We have your audio updates unless you got anything you want to add real quick. I, I know. I think we're good. Um, so, community is there input? any community input on... Um, yeah. Any community input online? Nobody's raising their hand. We'll give them a second. Any yeah. community input here? I just, uh, very informative. It's tough to sit, sit here and not ask questions. Uh -huh. <laughs> very tough. Well, feel free to ask. <laughs> Do you have any questions? Uh, no, I listed them. Okay. Um, all right, so I'm Jack thing. Boyle, by the way. I'm sorry? I'm Jack Boyle. Nice to meet you, Jack. Jody. Uh, Jody Carnes, 28th Island Ave. Uh, you touched on it briefly. You did a great overview of what you do um, with them. Um, revenue and tax rate setting. Um, are, other than you, who else knows how to put it into the state website? That's a really brilliant question. Um, mm -hmm. Because Cause I know it's coming. <laughs> it's, it's coming. Sure. It's very time intensive sure. and it's a huge responsibility. Um, it, Chuck is getting acquainted with it. Okay. Um, it's, it takes a lot of, it's not an intuitive portal. Um, and, and tax rate setting on a good day is really intense. The state, you, you upload all these documents, the state throws them back. You make adjustments, you upload them again, you have conversations, they tweak things, you wait two days, you hope for feedback and you don't get it, and then you upload more documents, and, and you do this hurry up and wait for several days. So um, that's the beginning of November. Um, it's, it's also throughout, the, the, the tax rate setting is in, is in um, October to early November, but um, it's really a throughout the year problem. You can't, um, you need to input the warrant into the portal 
um, in, in December as, as you're working with the budget committee in order to get the warrant ready prior to the public hearing to make sure that DRA has reviewed your language and your proposals to make sure they're okay with, your do with what you're doing, which is not a substitute for legal, but it's just to make sure that they approve of your funding sources. This is how we, we learned that um, fire radios um, wouldn't qualify for CIP and you need to use the equipment fund or operating or some other fund. So, um, so that sounds like a transition item that needs a lot more detail um, from you. Um, hopefully it'll fit within the hour, but if we need to go over, you know, just more um, defined process about what exactly you do um, and what we would need to know. Maybe even a new town administrator would need to know. Um, anyone in the state who is a finance or town, town administrator person is familiar with the portal and, and knows it and understands it. Um, so, what is, I'm sorry, what is the exact name of that? Is, it, what's the, is there a name for the portal? What is it? No. Okay, that's okay. Um, I, I would just refer to it as the DRA web portal. I don't know that That's what I was just looking for a name. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm happy to talk about it. And you said you're teaching, Chuck, how to use that? I am, however, you know, the state is offering training on it, and I'm, you know, and they do, like, periodically throughout the year. It's not, um, you, you learn best by doing it, so I, I think he's not really going to get a full hold of it until he's been doing it. It's very technical, and, you know, sometimes you have to get the auditor involved because there are higher level questions um, that are kind of nitpicking and discretionary and some things like that. Okay. Another question. Okay. Sorry. Uh, your welfare line is level. I would recommend an increase in that. You overspent two years ago. Um, and I'm in Rochester welfare now and we're starting to get slammed because every, all the benefits are leaving. We have electric rates at $8,000. We have people that haven't paid their rent in a year and a half. Um, so you're going to be seeing, hot. we don't have a lot of welfare in town comparatively to Dover and Rochester, but we can spend our budget in two people mm -hmm. because all it takes is one person that can't sustain themselves. And when you have rents at $1,700 and their social security is 900 and the waiting list for um, housing is a year and a half or five years, you're going to have to sustain that person. So one person can wipe out your budget. The other thing you can do if you want to, which we haven't really talked about because I don't really see the board doing it, but if you wanted to create a policy about how you would disperse the funds to people who can prove that they were affected by COVID financially in some way, then you could potentially use ARPA funds for that. <coughs> I think I could read that. Yeah. Okay. And COVID funds are still available through CAP. They've only dispersed about 20%. Okay. There was another two. I. Oh, okay. I what did you say? Yep. I didn't interrupt you, sir. Okay, sorry. Okay, please. Um, Carrie Boyle, um, two quick questions. Master plan um, that you were you were talking about um, that bringing in a company to do that when they get the when they're doing their meetings, talking with residents, things like that. Do they come in? Do these generally? Do they do they really go by what residents are thinking? Or I know this sounds strange, but do they have, like I think you said maybe Stratford Regional or something, do they have a plan that they are trying to promote themselves or are they completely neutral? I, that, that's, a that's a really, I, I appreciate your skepticism because it's valid. Um, and, and outside agencies work with other municipalities and they also have a big picture goal potentially but no they they can't so so Stratford Regional Planning Commission specifically is um, an organization that's created by statute to 
um, keep an eye on regional planning, but, but they have to maintain individual municipality interests too. So no, they, they can't do that. And um, we, we, we've engaged in several projects with Strava Regional Planning. Um, right now, um, local freshwater source protection program grant to align our stormwater regulations with planning regulations. Um, because they deal with other municipalities, they have a lot of resources. But no, the point is, to, is, is informed facilitation. Okay. So, for example, I, I went to such a meeting for a different larger community in another state once upon a time. And they had these maps of the town in different stations in the room. And they gave everybody sticky dots. And you say, you know, over here in this station, um, put, you, you know, each sticky dot is a vote. And, and put your however many sticky dots on the areas that you want to preserve. And, and that's data collection. And over here, these are the areas, like where do you want to see commercial development? And you have a new set of sticky dots, and, and each, everybody who comes puts their sticky dots up. Okay. So, so they collect data in those kinds of ways. Okay, thank you, because I was just wondering, and that's what it is, like, is it more facilitation, or do they have almost an agenda? Like, I guess I would rather see it that the people are driving, they're facilitating it, but the people, the outcome is driven by Input. the residents. Not, not them and that, how that they is feel it should entirely be. the point and why I would advocate for spending the money to have an outside agency do it rather than have a town facilitator because, for example, I could do this or your planning board chair could do this, but they have they live here and they know the town and they have a stake in the game, potentially you know, in seeing something turn out in in a, in a, in a certain way. So if you hire an outside consultant or agency then they don't live here. This is, this is your community. Okay. So my second question, quick, and then I'll just, um, and this is probably, I just want to make sure, um, I'm thinking it's the highway safety. Um, if, if we were looking at a road, and I'm going to throw it out there, Clement Road, so, tra I'm sorry, so highly traveled, um, and I think that's part of the reason why it gets, you know, beaten up the way it is. But, Highly traveled, cut through road, mostly main residents. You see the cars coming through. Um, no offense to main residents. I know there are none here, but I mean. Um, but, um, and the speeding. So if, um, it, I don't know if there are things to, like, things to be done. I know they've done signs, you know, local traffic only doesn't work, things like that. No, no. I know a few years, and it's been a while, but um, you know, there was some talk, some residents were talking about maybe making it a one way. Um, I know it wouldn't it wouldn't, you know and then that kind of makes people use the state road on Rollins, on Goodwin Road so or Rollins where the state is picking up, you know, if there's more wear and tear on that on those roads. So, is that the place for that, if to start a discussion um, on there, that? There or? are two ways to do that. Um, highway safety is really about safety, and, and speeding plays into safety, of course, and that's okay. one thing. Um, and they could suggest to the select board, maybe the way to do that is, is, is a one-way road. Um, Depending on that outcome and how satisfied you are with that outcome, you can also go to the select board and say, um, could we engage with Stratford Regional Planning to come in and do a traffic study and study how many cars, what time of day, what the speed is, and to have their traffic engineers suggest, do you want to put fog lines like really like close together in there so it looks like your travel lane is really skinny even though it's not? There, there are some things you can do like that way that can help, mm -hmm. um, you know, psychologically for drivers mitigate these things. So, the, um, and by the way, Stratford Regional Planning Commission, um, Rollinsford gets two representatives on, on um, their commission and we only have one. So if you're looking for something to do, you can learn all about these <laughs> things with them and what they offer and their services. Um, and, and so Herbie Weda is our other one and he's working with them to talk um, about transportation planning in the state's 10-year road plan for funding 
around the intersection, like all of Route 4, but specifically his interest is in the Roberts Road, Bear Road intersection and the traffic there. So a number of studies have done um, have been done there with Strapa Regional Planning, with UNH engineering students, and he's engaging now again with Strapa Regional Planning and DOT to see what can happen there. That's a little bit different where that's a state road, um, that it can qualify for state funding, but the premise is still the same, that there are different things that you can do to mitigate traffic issues, and Strapa Regional Planning has transportation gurus that can come and talk to the town about what the options are, what the costs are, whether or not there are funding sources. If it's if it is a safety issue and they can identify it as a safety issue, then maybe there are funding sources. So so you could do both and maybe the Highway Safety Committee might recommend to the select board that you reach out to Strava Regional Planning to see what might be available with them. There was a I was involved with it. I know Burr was involved with it. There's probably about 10 residents involved with about somewhere between six and seven years ago that we didn't reduce it by a lot, but the speed limit on Route 4 was 55. Mm -hmm. And we went, I think, to the same planning people and talked to the state. And we were told it would never happen, but we got to reduce to 50 anyway. So it was a safety issue. One of the main reasons was that intersection where there was four or five yeah, accidents yeah. and there's been a couple fatalities, so yeah, you can work on stuff like that. And I'm just going to say one last comment just about speeding is, because Kim brought up maybe a month ago about a lot of people speeding at night. I got to say I was a little bit guilty of not like going 50 to 35, but you know, 40, 42. And since people have noticed it, I've known, since people have mentioned it in the meetings, say I've noticed, I'm trying to slow down and do the speed limit. But, I've noticed there's a lot of people when I'm going 40 and 35 that they're right on my butt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of people who come through Rollins for that aren't residents mm -hmm. that I don't want to say a hardly, you know, way above the speed limit, but they they would probably be ticketed by our officers if they're out there. And John did make the comment that there's two patrolmen that'll be very quickly up to speed, so then he's planned on having more patrols for speed traps and stuff. So I just want to bring that up because there's been a lot of speeding in Rollins for I think. It's residents too, but it's a lot of non residents. Yeah. And I and I know it seems to be an issue all over town. Um, but I know that I mean Clement's Clement, bad, Clement sure. is it's really very bad. They sit in our driveway, the place. Um, <laughs> well we've encouraged them to sit there. Um, but there's you know, my daughter and I have been passed, um, you know, and the other night I was driving I had my blinker on to turn in my driveway and and the car was right. I had the car was right on my butt. And as I was turning, sorry, that now I'm butt. That's <laughs> um, I turned it, and like they were just like laying on the horn, and then just headed down, you know, to the Rollins for the end. And it's just like they, they are just. It's a. And then so, as I, you know, when they go to resurface the road, or pave the road, yeah, or That's put a new line. And it's like, oh, here comes the freeway again. So oh, yeah. um, I kind of, when they put she the... You want them to fix the road. <laughs> yeah, when, they, when they put the culvert, uh, fixed it in front of um, the Genetuses on Clement Road, I was actually happy, you know, because I'm like, maybe this is kind of a reverse speed bump. Speed bump. Um, so um, I just, it, it's, it's crazy. So I don't know, may, I mean, does it... Maybe I guess I'll just start with highway safety. Yeah, yeah, yeah start with Okay. Let's. Shh, you can't do if you want, I, I would suggest that you um, send an email to highway safety okay. committee at wexford.nh.us and okay. um, just express to them your concern okay, um, and you. ask them to put it on their next agenda. Okay, thank you. All right, so I think that's a. Well, next week. Do you want to come to the Can I just ask a quick question? Okay. Absolutely. Um, since House SIP is meeting on the 1st, are you going to nominate someone to be on the committee? Oh, thank you for that. Um, so, Miles served in, um, in that capacity. The CIP committee really tried to wrap things up so that there wouldn't be an ongoing need. Um, I don't, you know, I, I'm also on that committee, so um, I'm happy to fill in for you. However, you have every right to assign one of yourselves to it. I would just say that um, you might assign, like reassign, do a reassignment once you have another board member. Right, I was um, thinking that. 
Oh. So, um, but if, if some of you, if, if one of you wants to, to come and, and, you know, be the ex officio for that night, then... What is it? Oh, it's Wednesday. Wednesday at 6.30. Oh, and I... You've got stormwater tomorrow night at 6.30. I mm hope -hmm. you're aware of that and coming. Um, Should be able to. I, got, I, got, I do have a work conference at 5, but it's supposed to be 5 or 6. Okay. It's supposed to be. I have a 5.30 appointment. It's possible I could make it, but I can't guarantee. So you would act for this meeting, but we really need to nominate for the next meeting. I, I don't think it's critical for this meeting. Okay. Um, if, if neither of you is available, I think that's perfectly fine. But it's just something to add to um, the yes. board of mm -hmm. appointments. Well, I think you. there's more than just SIP, too. Because, oh, there is. Um, there's, like, the budget committee. Bill, and budget committee. Yeah. Right. So I think the sooner we um, resolve the issues around the vacancy, the better. Yeah. True. Yeah. Okay. All right. right. Um, so, so we should put that on the agenda, actually. Too. What is that? <clears throat> um, well, so we, it doesn't drop off our radar. True. We have to mm -hmm. fill those. Is there any other community input? Oh. And they'll be online? Cool. Okay, so I was going to make a motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you. Yes. Bye. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Yes. Oh.